Um, could you guys pop me up here on the green screen? And I wanted to point out that where we do have this debris signature. Uh, go back to links two, please, upstairs. Thank you. So uh, this is where we likely have a debris signature ongoing right over Abbeville. And this just popped up. Um, and uh, I want to take it. Um, uh, actually, go ahead and click uh, out of the debris signature. Go to the velocity signature. And they just went purple on this. So this is a confirmed tornado warning now. So. Um, this is a confirmed tornado that's on the ground that likely just hit near near downtown Abbeville. So uh, we need to go ahead and get some streets here. I know off the top of my head, this road right here, this is Alabama State Route 10. If you're along State Route 10 or north of that, you need to get to your safe place right now. And that's the smallest room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows and doors. And we know for sure this is on the ground because we we saw that debris signature. And can we go back to that debris signature over there, Jordan, um, on this storm? And I want to point out um, where that debris signature is right now. And I'll, I'll just come back over and uh, click on it here real quick. Uh, right there, yeah. So I'm going to point uh, out that debris signature here, this uh, discoloration right here. And I want to just give you for reference, all of this is rain. The pink and magenta colors, that's all rain. Um, this uh, di this uh, difference in color, the yellow, and then once you get into the green, uh, once you get that difference in color from the red, which is the rest of the precipitation going on, that is an indication that we have lofted debris. So we definitely have a tornado on the ground here uh, near Abbeville or just to the east of Abbeville that may have just hit town directly. And you see the polygon now is pink. So this is now a confirmed tornado warning for portions now of northern and eastern Henry County. And then as you move into Clay County, Georgia, um, and how long does this warning go out. Uh, do we have the National Weather Service chat up over there? Uh, hold on. L let me come back over there and I'll uh, go look because I should have. Um, okay, I'm going to go check and see how long this is. I want to make sure too that this isn't a uh, considerable damage tag on this tornado warning. Uh, this. Okay, 11.30. So this tornado warning goes out until 11.30 for northern and eastern portions of Henry County. And again, I think we're just going to keep it on the debris signature at this point, just because this is going to be our best indication of looking at the tornado warning. And I want to go ahead and zoom into this area, Jordan, if we could, um, and look at what roads we have. So off the top of my head, I know this is Alabama State Route 10. If you're in Will's Crossroads, you need to be in your safe place right now. Smallest room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows and doors. Let's zoom in a little bit more in this area. We're going to get tighter and tighter. Uh, go down to the south a little bit there, Jordan, and uh, let's see if we can get some more uh, roads. Shorterville, I just saw off to my right here. Um, so if you're in Shorterville, this is head your way next, probably in the next three to five minutes. You need to be in your safe place right now, anywhere along State Route 10 in Henry County, east of Abbeville. You need to be in your safe place right now. And there's our debris signature. This thing is definitely down on the ground again. And you can see with the box here, confirmed tornado warning goes on until 1130, including Henry County, the northern and eastern part specifically. Um, so if you're in Shorterville, you need to be in your safe place right now. Will's Crossroads, like I mentioned, you need to be in your safe place right now. And eventually down the line, Fort Gaines, I know you're not in our viewing area in Clay County, uh, Georgia, but you need to be in your safe place right now as well. If you happen to get our channel over the airwaves in Clay County, or if you know someone that lives in Clay County, Georgia, or is living right along the state line, or is at Bagby State Park, for example, Get, uh, give them a call, let them know there is a confirmed tornado on the ground that is going to be paralleling or staying just north of State Route 10 in Henry County and will be moving into Clay County, Georgia here not too long from now. I'm actually going to come over back to uh, the Weather Center and I'll take control of that real quick, Jordan, uh, just so we can uh, look at the rotation too. I do want to see what that is looking like as well. And um, I do want to take it back in time here as well. I want to see if we had the hook signature, the signature hook. These are supercell thunderstorms that have been developing, and this thing developed really quickly, and you can kind of see the hook right there. And uh, I'll leave it up here just to show you guys that hook um, and what I mean by that. So this is before it was severe. Watch the southwestern part of the storm. You can see the hook right there, and it tightened up very quickly, about as quickly as uh, a storm can tighten up, because we, talk, we were talking about a rotation that just happened, and then boom, it just dropped a tornado just like that. And that's where we have that confirmed tornado warning for portions of Henry County moving into Clay County, Georgia here not too long from now. Um, 20, so it's moving at 25 miles per hour. Let me check that. 
Yeah, east at 25. Okay, so if you're in Fort Gaines, Georgia, I know you're not in our viewing area, but if you know anyone in Clay County, you need to tell them to get to a safe place right now. Smallest room, lowest floor, near the center, away from doors and windows. In the immediate coverage area on the eastern side of Henry County, if you're in Shorterville, if you're in Wills Crossroads, like I mentioned, north or along or north of Alabama State Route 10, you need to be in your safe place right now. And uh, Fort Gaines, it's going to be on you at 12.04 p.m. Eastern Time, um, and it's going to be getting close to Shorterville. Uh, and using logic here, uh, right around the top of the hour, 11 o'clock, as the daytime show is starting. So let's go ahead and clear this track off, Jordan, and um, let's put the rotation on. Let's go to velocity and uh, see what this is looking like. And this is from, is this the Fort Rucker radar? Yeah, switch it over to Fort Rucker because that'll give us the best view of it. And um, we might want to try storm relative uh, for the um, for the rotation. Not the be well, let's zoom out here. Let's see if we can see it a little bit better if we zoom out. There's a little bit of green and red there, but let's actually take the loop back. Let's start the loop back at the beginning and see what we're looking like. Um, when this thing developed. So um, we're going to see the storm develop right here. There's the rotation right there, right as it developed. And uh, really the best indication we're going to see of this is the debris signature. So actually, let's go back to the debris signature because we definitely had a tornado that touched down in or around Abbeville. And we saw the debris uh, signature. And I'll come back over there and fix that up here real quick, uh, Jordan. So. Um, let me take the mouse here real quick, and we're going to stop the loop. We're going to go back to the, to the, uh, the CC, um, and we're going to play this back in time. Um, we're actually going to shorten it from an hour to 30 minutes. So actually, this thing has been down for a while, and it actually was not tornado worn for quite a while. And I'll show, wait, show you what I mean. So um, we're going to let this play out to the end. So it looks like this thing is still down, but you see just to the west of Abbeville, this actually had discoloration on the correlation coefficient. So this thing was down on the ground, was not tornado worn, then it was. And, uh, and if you could pause the loop for me, Jordan, we'll point out that debris signature once again. Doesn't look quite as impressive as it did. So hopefully this is a sign that it is weakening, but um, there's still some discoloration in there. So um, it's a little... It's a little iffy. It's in a little bit in that iffy category, but still, because this has a history of dropping a tornado in Abbeville and to the west of Abbeville, as we saw, we need to take this storm seriously. So again, if you're along State Route 10, if you're in Wills Crossroads or to the north of Wills Crossroads, Shorterville in particular, that's the biggest community uh, on our side, on, on the TV side of things for us, uh, over in, in uh, portions of Henry County that's going to be affected by this storm. And it's going to be moving towards Fort Gaines as well as we get closer to the top of the hour and it's going to continue this tornado warning will continue until 11:30 a.m. and another thing too uh, so we have a storm to the north as well this is out of our coverage area but if you're uh, if you have friends that live near Cuthbert Georgia or uh, or in Quitman or Randolph counties there's a uh, also a tornado warning there what looks to be another tornado on the ground so these storms definitely spinning up here pretty quickly and um, I want to uh, go to a big view here if we could just go back to the regular reflectivity Jordan and um, I'll show you what's going on. Let's just go ahead and put this into motion. Go ahead and take that box off for me, the uh, confirmed tornado warning box, um, and put this into motion over the last half hour. And we can see how things have really started to fire up here. And you can see the, this is kind of what we were expecting to happen. These are all supercell thunderstorms that are now developing, and they're becoming tornado worn really quickly. This one uh, in Henry County, and then this one that's further to the northeast in southwest Georgia. And we have to watch all of these for that potential uh, to drop a tornado. Tornado, and also not just for a tornado potential, but for something that uh, may be just as bad, and that is a, dest a destructive wind potential, maybe 70 to 80 mile per hour winds, and also potentially a very large hail uh, up to potentially two or three inches in diameter uh, with some of these storms potentially. But of course, the focus right now is on that tornado warning in Henry County. And um, let's uh, pause the loop over there, Jordan. And um, Let's zoom back into our storm that's in Henry County right now. Um, and it's still 
exhibiting sort of a hook shape. It's more of a kidney bean shape at this point. And let's turn on the, uh, the base velocity first. If we can't pick anything up on that, let's go to the storm relative velocity. Um, and you can kind of see the rotation. It's not all that impressive, but as we take it to the CC, we'll take it to the debris, uh, we could still see an indication, I think. Uh, in my meteorological opinion, I do think this tornado is still on the ground. We still are getting that discoloration. Uh, all this magenta is just rain ahead of the storm. And usually when we have a regular day with just rain and no severe weather, if you turn on this particular product, it will just be magenta and red. But um, with on a day like this, we're looking for these kind of discolorations. And that is an indication that debris is being lofted. In this case, probably since it went over a relatively populated part of our viewing area in Abbeville, uh, maybe parts of houses, uh, maybe some bricks, some boards, nails, glass, uh, parts of trees are being picked up likely, leaves, um, and that's what this product is picking up on. So we do still have this debris signature uh, east of Abbeville now, and the storm is moving pretty slowly, so it's going to take a little bit of time for it to get to portions of uh, eastern Henry County, and eventually it's going to cross the river here into Clay County, Georgia, and we'll be out of our viewing area. So Shorterville, that's the main community I'm concerned about for Henry County. If you're in Shorterville, I've, I cannot stress this enough. You need to get to a safe place right now. I do think this thing is still on the ground. I'm not sure how big this tornado is, but we do have a pretty sizable debris field here. So if you're in eastern Henry County, if you're along and north of Alabama State Route 10, you need to be in your safe place right now. Shorterville is about right here, and then Fort Gaines will be the next stop on this storm's journey, and that will take into Clay County, Georgia. And again, Clay County is not in our viewing area technically. Uh, that's the Albany television market. So. Um, when this warning expires, we'll be handing it off to them. And more than likely, we'll be taking this tornado warning uh, into the daytime show because this tornado warning technically doesn't expire until 1130. But um, I think there's a safe bet this thing should be over in Clay County before 1130. But it is moving relatively slow. It's only moving at 25 miles per hour to the east. So, um, and as we look at this storm, again, I think we still have a debris, or now that I look at it, uh, doesn't look as impressive. I think this debris field is starting to scatter out. So the good news is there's a good chance this tornado may have lifted. Um, we do have this, the rotation there still. Not the most impressive rotation in the world, but there's definitely a rotation in the storm. We've got the green heading towards the radar, the red heading away. You get that counterclockwise rotation. That's what you need uh, for a storm to be rotating. And when they're in that tight space, that's when we get the, a better potential for a tornado and it's going to be heading basically right towards downtown Fort Gaines, Georgia, right on the Georgia Alabama state line and also the Shorterville area as well. Again, if you're in Shorterville, you need to be in your safe place right now. Smallest room, lowest floor, near the uh, away from windows and doors in an interior room such as a closet or a bathroom or a room that's underneath a stairwell is the best place you can be. So again, tornado warning continues now for the eastern part of Henry County. I want to go ahead and give some all clears. So if you're in Abbeville, you probably just got hit by a tornado, I would imagine, based on what we've seen on the debris signature. Uh, you are good to come out of your safe place right now, but be careful because I would assume we're going to get some damage reports from Abbeville with this particular tornado uh, warning. So if you're in Abbeville, you are good to go. Uh, but if you're east of Abbeville, I'm going to say if you're in downtown Abbeville and west, you are good. You can come out of your safe place. But if you're Abbeville, if you're east of downtown Abbeville all the way to the Georgia state line, I want you to stay in your safe place for the next probably 10 to 15 minutes until this storm uh, moves over into Georgia and moves into Clay County and uh, out of our viewing area. So um, let's take it back to the velocity and let's see if it's uh, changed at all and see if it's happened a week and it still looks basically the same uh, still a relatively wound up storm here let's take it to the debris signature though that has been uh, the indicator mostly of the storm and I think there's a good uh, there's a good bet that this tornado has lifted but because now it has a history of likely producing damage and uh, actually I want us to go back in time I already have it on that 30 minute loop Jordan if you could play it um, and you can see here right over at Abbeville, basically, um, right when this warning came out, this is a confirmation that debris was lofted in some capacity. Again, all of this magenta is just red or precipitation of some sort. And then when you have this that just sticks out like a sore thumb here, uh, the, this, these blues and greens and yellows.
clothes. This is an indication of something that is not rain, likely bricks or boards or nails or glass or parts of trees, leaves, you name it, any kind of debris, that's what this is picking up on. And this means that a tornado likely touched down uh, right uh, over Abbeville, basically. And then as we take it uh, eastward in time, Jordan, if we could uh, put the loop back into motion, and see what it's looking like now. You can see it went to a confirmed tornado warning and now um, actually you can turn off the loop Jordan and um we can see now we're not seeing as much of that discoloration. I know we have some of these greens and yellows here um, over across the state line, but those are not co-located with the rotation, so it's a safe bet that that is not a tornado. So I think at this point the tornado is lifted, but because this storm has a history of producing a tornado based on radar, we need to respect this storm. So again, if you're in Shorterville, this is basically on top of you now if you're in Shorterville. You need to be in your safe place right now if you're not already. I gave you uh, the uh, the call to go to a safe place about probably 10 or 15 minutes ago, but if by chance you're just hearing me now, go to your safe place, smallest room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows and doors. If you have friends that live in Fort Gaines or live east of Fort Gaines in Clay County, um, almost over, not quite over to US 27, but if they live on Georgia State Route 39, for example, or Georgia State Route 266, give them a call, or if they live near any of those state routes in Georgia, give them a call, let them know that a storm uh, that has produced a tornado likely is headed their way here in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Let's actually take it back to a, the reflectivity view, the Doppler radar, um, and see if it still has that kidney bean shape. Yeah, it, it still has that kidney bean shape. So definitely um, a very healthy supercell here in an environment that uh, has very high dew points. We have dew points in the 70s right now. Temperatures are pretty warm as well as we're sitting in the 80s. So overall, uh, this is in a very prime environment to produce a tornado. And again, likely it did as it was over the Abbeville area. I want to zoom out and give a big view of what's going on right now. So this is not the only storm. You can see storm of the amount of storms uh, had have increased dramatically. And I would say at this point, the radar is lighting up like a Christmas tree. We have more storms over in Dale County. We have more in Coffee County, Geneva County. We have some light rain in Houston County, but the only storm at this point that ha is uh, severe and likely has produced a tornado in Abbeville is this one that's now starting to move out of portions of uh, Henry County here pretty soon and will be moving into Clay County. This storm up here, too, was a storm of concern. Um, if we take the loop back a little bit further, Jordan, uh, we can see that this storm to the north also, you see the purple flashing box. That one also likely produced a tornado uh, a little further north of our viewing area. If you have any friends or family that live in Cuthbert, Georgia, or near Benevolence, Georgia, uh, that storm likely produced a tornado just west of there, west of US 27. But this is, of course, the storm to focus on. And we're just going to go back now, zoom back in on this tornado warning. Notice we still have the purple flashing box and actually you can see it starting to get that hook signature again. So uh, maybe what we saw with this storm when it was losing that hook signature, it was doing what we call cycling. It likely produced not an intense tornado by any means, but a tornado of sorts that was down on the ground for a while. And um, and now the storm is starting to cycle and get back it and get back organized. And the rotation doesn't look all that or all that impressive. Uh, zoom out a little bit there, Jordan. Let's see if we can see. Uh, I still think we have some rotation there. Not the most impressive rotation in the world, but um, as we go back or as we take it over to the debris detector. There's a little there. This is kind of debatable if there is a debris signature. I would lean towards that there is just because of the history of the storm that we definitely have had a tornado on the ground as of recently uh, with this storm in Abbeville uh, about in the last 10 to 15 minutes. But you can see we're getting that hook shape now and uh, you're getting the inflow here. You're getting the very warm and unstable air. That means that this storm is starting to strengthen now at this point in time. So this is going to be a storm to watch here for the future. And of course, for now. Coffee County tornado warning now too. Okay. Um, let's go over to Coffee County. We have another tornado warning that just came out. Um, thank you for the information behind the scenes. So new tornado warning, and you can see it's the exact same situation. We've got a supercell with this hook shape here. A new tornado warning for Coffee County that goes out until 1145. I'm going to step out um, and take a look at the parameters on that here real quick now that they have the National Weather Service chat up. Um, severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located near Elba moving east at 25. So this one, uh, unlike the one in Henry County, is not confirmed, which is good, but uh, nonetheless is just as dangerous. So um, 
if we could zoom out here just a little bit, I believe it, yeah, it's, it's got to be this area right here. So it's actually not over Elba right now, but it's to the west of Elba. And it's moving just as slow as the storm that we saw in Henry County. It's moving generally in this fashion. So the rotation itself should stay north of downtown Elba. But if you're in Elba, I would still take your tornado precautions. Get to a safe place right now, smallest room, lowest floor, near the center away from windows and doors. And if we could take this part of the box off, Jordan, um, I don't think we have a lot of populated communities in this area. Um, if we could actually zoom in north of Elba, let's see if we can pick up on some communities. So we have Saddle Hill right here. If you're in Saddle Hill, this thing is almost basically on top of you right now. You need to get to your safe place immediately. If you're in the Lee community, if you're in Shady Grove, if you're along Alabama State Route 87, if you're along Alabama State Route 189, or in between those two highways, you need to be in your safe place right now. And uh, take this box off real quick, Jordan. Let's see what highway uh, this is. Zoom into this highway right here so we can see what one that is. Um, or that might just be a river, actually. I believe that's the P River. So if you're along the P River in Elba, or north of Elba, or in the city of Elba, like I mentioned, you want to get to your safe place as well. And let's zoom out and get the full view of this storm and what it looks like. So, and here's the full warning too. I'm actually glad we zoomed out about this far because uh, this tornado warning is just for Coffee County and it's for central Coffee County. So Enterprise, that's where the majority of the population in Coffee County lives. Not everyone, but a majority of the population. If you're an Enterprise, this is going to stay well north of you. You do not need to be in your safe place if you're an Enterprise. Uh, New Brockton, the downtown area, I think you're good. Downtown New Brockton and south, you are good. But if you're north of New Brockton, I would lean on the side of caution and get into a safe place. But of course, Elba, you need to be in a safe place. Uh, let's zoom into this area. Let's see what other communities we have. I believe uh, Jack is included in this tornado warning. Um, we got the Mixon community, Arcus, Victoria. Uh, Jack also up the line up uh, State Route 167 should also be in this tornado warning as well. So this one goes out until 11:45. Again, is radar indicated at this point in time? You can see it's starting to get that hook shape here. So again, it's in a very favorable environment, and these are supercell thunderstorms. These storms, the whole storm is rotating. So these are going to be storms that have the capability to produce a tornado. We've seen that already with just storm number one today in portions of Henry County, and now we're getting storm number two that is starting to wrap up as we speak, moving into portions of central Coffee County. So um, I mentioned Alabama State Route 189, Alabama State Route 87, the P River is right here, of course, US 84. Uh, you have the bypass around the north and west side of Elba, and then you have downtown Elba. Uh, I know this is passing to your north, so actually now that I think about it, with it passing to the north, if you're in downtown Elba, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the all clear. But if you're north of the bypass here, I'm gonna, um, draw it with my finger right here, the bypass. If you're north of that, I want you to be in your safe place right now. North of US 84, basically, I want you to be in your safe place right now. And here's the rotation itself. Let's actually turn on the uh, velocity, if we could, Jordan, over there in the uh, weather center. Um, and here's the signature right here. Um, is this, uh, or yeah, there's the rotation right there. Northwest of Elba, it's gonna be moving in this general fashion like this. Um, and we'll be moving to the east at 25. So just as slow as the storm that we saw across portions of uh, Henry County. So we're gonna put a track on this. Hopefully we can pick up on some communities here as it moves to the east at 25. Not a lot of population out here, that's okay. Um, we'll zoom in and show and show you some of them. Shady Grove, um, it's gonna, sh it should stay south of you, but it's close enough of a call where you need to be in your safe place right now. Alabama State Route 167, as I mentioned, you have the P River right here. Alabama State Route 87 and Alabama State Route 189 is right here. And the rotation basically right now is over the community of Saddle Hill, where you get the green right there and the red, and where you get that counterclockwise rotation. That's where the storm is rotating right now. And actually, keep that circle right there, Jordan. Let's put on the correlation coefficient. Let's see if this is picking up on any debris. Thankfully, it's not right now, which is good. So no indication that this is actually on the ground, but because we have that tornado warning in place, the storm is rotating and could produce a tornado at any time. So if you're in Shady Grove, if you're north of Elba along 87 or 189, or uh, live along the P River north of Elba, um, and eventually down the line here, Alabama State Route 167, you need to all be in your safe place right now. So um, I wanna uh, shift away from this storm. Let's go back to our Henry County storm because that one is moving pretty slow. Um, as well. And let's see if that has moved into Georgia. Um, it is very close to moving into Georgia now. 
And you see we still have the purple box here, so they're still thinking this is on the ground um, across portions of um, Henry County. And there, there's a good chance that this is probably still on the ground. It's a little hard to tell because you do have some of these, uh, blue, uh, some of these other blues and spots, but if we could circle that right there, Jordan, right there, and put on the velocity signature, that will be a confirmation to see if that is on the ground um, right now. And um, if we could switch it over. Yeah, I do think that's on the ground. It's very close to where the rotation is. So I do think this is at the very least a small tornado that's on the ground. Uh, moving in this general fashion, it should pass relatively close to Bagby State Park. So if you're in the far eastern part of Henry County right now, you need to be in your safe place immediately. And again, Fort Gaines, I would still say you need to be in your safe place, especially the northern side of Fort Gaines and the northern side of Shorterville, or if you're on the Alabama side of the Chattahoochee River, you need to be in your safe place as we speak as this storm continues to push off to the east and actually does have a history of producing a tornado as it's moved across portions of Henry County. Um, I don't know if we, I don't think we've gotten any reports of damage in Abbeville yet, but of course we'll pass those along once we get them because we definitely had a debris signature right over the city of uh, Abbeville. And this is likely, I think, where the rotation is now. Um, they're right along State Route 10. So that might be coming right into downtown Fort Gaines. So if you're in Fort Gaines or the eastern and northern side of Shorterville, you need to be in your safe place right now. This thing looks like it's still on the ground and it's moving east at 25 and uh, that's going to take it over into Fort Gaines here in the next three minutes. I'd say less than three minutes. If you're in Fort Gaines, I know you're not in our viewing area. If you have friends or family that live anywhere in Clay County, Georgia, you need to tell them to get to a safe place right now. So um, this one, I think, potentially could still be on the ground. It's a little bit up for debate, but I'm just going to err on the side of caution here. I don't want to say it's not on the ground, and it is. Um, because we do have this blue here, um, I'm going to err on the side of it's probably still on the ground, just based on the history of the storm having been on the ground earlier. So uh, if we could take the circle off and we can take the track off again, tornado warning remains in effect here for Henry County for the next 23 minutes, but I would imagine before 1130 it will be allowed to expire. So let's um, switch back to the reflectivity. We're going to go back down to the uh, Coffee County storm um, and you can see it still has that hook shape and um, it's now passing or about to pass over Alabama State Route 189, um, no, well north of downtown Elba. I think that was a good call. If you're in downtown Elba, you don't have to worry about this storm. It's going to stay well north of you, prob probably by about four or five miles. The next road up will be Alabama State Route 87 and then the P River right here as well. So let's zoom in to this area right here between 189 and 87, Jordan. Uh, we have the Lee community. I want to see if we can pick up on any other roads. So this, we should be able to pick up on some because this is a relatively populated air, or relatively populated in the sense that we're getting close to uh, the, the county seat of Elba, uh, the county seat of Coffee County, I should say. Um, so uh, again, 87, 189, if you're in between those two roads in the Lee community, that's uh, the only community it looks like in between those two roads. You need to go ahead and get to your safe place right now. Zoom out just a little bit more because I can see our rotation right here, still to the east of Saddle Hill. And that's actually kind of where it was the last scan. Um, I think, yeah, around this area here. Um, and again, these are very slow moving storms, only 25 miles per hour. So no surprise that the next scan almost had it in the exact same place that it was the last scan. So Lee, you're up next, Shady Grove, eventually the Arcus community, and then Victoria. Um, I would guess, given that these storms have kind of trended more to the east-northeast, it's kind of going to go in this fashion. So it should stay just to the south of the Pea River. After it crosses the Pea River, it should parallel the river just to the south. So Arcus and Victoria, it should stay. Another tornado warning? Okay, let's, let's go up to Dale County. Okay, here we go. Another tornado warning. This one's going to be heading into some more populated areas. So um, these storms are really starting to wrap up now. This is turning out to be kind of a spring-like day. Um, actually, zoom out here, Jordan, real quick. I do want to see who's in and out because we're talking about now the most populated parts of our viewing area. So southern Dale County, southwestern Henry, northwestern Houston County until noon. We have a new tornado warning, and I'm going to check in behind the scenes here of um to see if this i believe it should be it should be radar indicated because it's the red box and um 
severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado near Daleville. Um, so this one's going to be a little bit more difficult to pick out. Um, just knowing where the radar site is, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to pick out. But um, it's safe to say, yeah, we do have it maybe right here. Actually, let's switch radar products. I, is this storm relative or is this base? Let's go to base velocity. Let's see if we can pick it up a little better there. Yeah, I think right there is about where the rotation is. So it said the rotation with this new tornado warning that just came out. This is for um, portions of central and southern Dale, northwestern Houston, and southwestern Henry County. This one is out until, um, tw until noon. This is where the rotation with this supercell is, is uh, northeast of Daleville and north of Newton. So it's going to be crossing 231 here really in short order. So if you know anyone driving along 231 between Midland City and Ozark, tell them to pull over now. Pull over now. Pull over to the rest area that's along 231, the Dale County rest area, pull over to a gas station, pull over to a restaurant of some sort. Uh, even though this uh, isn't on the ground, I don't think. Let's take it over to the debris signature. Um, a little bit iffy. Um, I want to wait another scan or two before I confirm this to be on the ground. So there's a chance this could be on the ground, but I want to wait a scan or two more to see if this thing tightens up, if we can make sure that it is 100% on the ground. But um, anyone who's on 231, uh, tell them to get off right now, get inside a, a safe and sturdy building away from windows and doors. Um, and actually, zoom back out. I want to look at the entire polygon. So down the line here, if you're um, in Midland City, go ahead and get in your safe place. The southern part of Ozark, if you're on 231, for example, by the Loves, and southward from there, I would say get in your safe place. But downtown Ozark, I think you're going to be okay for the most part. Um, and then as we head over eastward, uh, Headland, you're included in this tornado warning. Newville is in this tornado warning as well. And then northwestern Houston County. Technically, this does include um, the city of Dothan and then the north side of town, the northwest side of town, uh, Wiregrass Commons, for example, Target, um, Michaels, that area. I think this should stay just to the north of that. We're going to continue to monitor the trends with it, but I think it should stay north mostly of Houston County. So at this point, I would say Midland City, Pinkard, Newton, Headland, Newville, um, and then also Echo, because we have the radar site here. I know this is where the Echo community is. If you're in Echo as well as those other four or five communities that I mentioned, you want to be in your safe place as well. Smallest room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows and doors. And um, I believe the rotation is somewhere back here or in here. Uh, it's not as traditional shaped of a supercell as some of the other storms. Uh, it's a little bit harder to pick out. I think that's also due in fact to the fact that we're closer to the radar. So we're going to have to wait a few scans to see where this is. But uh, they said near uh, Daleville, it was somewhere, somewhere in this area is where we're seeing that rotation right now. Uh, there is a chance that this could be a debris signature. I want to see if we can co-locate it with the rotation before we can confirm it as an actual tornado. But there is a chance that we could have a tornado on the ground here. Um, uh, north of Newton, about to move over 231 between Ozark and Midland City. Again, no one should be traveling along 231 north or south between these two cities. Um, so that's that tornado warning. I want to go back real quick to the one that's up north um, across portions of Henry County. That one is actually on the state line right now. Um, I want to check out the debris signature with that. I want to see if it's still on the ground. Um, it's about to be out of Henry County probably in the next two or three minutes. That I think this is still on the ground. I mean, we saw the hook on that storm. This tornado is basically right over Fort Gaines. So if you know anyone that's in Fort Gaines, please, please, please tell them to be in a safe place. Even though Fort Gaines is outside of our viewing area, uh, Henry County is just across the river. We probably have a, we have a lot of viewers, of course, in Henry County, but a lot of viewers, too, probably watch us over in Clay County, Georgia, as well. So um, tell them to get to a safe place there as well. But thankfully, the, the threat from this storm that has produced a tornado, we know that for sure, looking at the debris signature, uh, the th threat from this tornado is about to end if you're over in Henry County. So. Um, let's go ahead and get off of this storm and we're going to go back down to Coffee County and we have that storm also to deal with. And you can see these are taking on that traditional supercell type shape. You've got the hook. This is probably the most traditional supercell shape that we have here. Um, 
and now east of 189. Uh, so if you're uh, along 189 or west of 189, you are good to go. Threat, threat is over from the storm. It's now over Highway 87 and then eastward from there towards the P River where we have this rotating storm. And let's take it to the velocity on this storm. That's going to be our best indication of rotation here. And uh, if we could switch it over to the other velocity product, let's see if we can get some of that red and green. Zoom out just a little bit. Um, let's see if we can get some red and green here. I, I still think it's this area right here where we're seeing the best rotation now, basically crossing over the P River. Uh, and it's not crossing into another county. It just happens to be crossing over a, a significant body of water. That's why I wanted to mention the P River in particular. So um, this is going to continue tracking off to the east. It's going to mostly stay south of Arcus and Victoria, but it's close enough to where I want you to stay in your safe place. Uh, mix in, you're going to be getting in on this as well. And then eventually the highway one 67 corridor, a very heavily traveled road for folks that are heading down to the beach, down from Troy through the Enterprise area. So um, if you're along 167, if you're along 87, you need to be in your safe place right now. North of Tabernacle, you need to be in your safe place right now as well. And this is Coffee County, Central Coffee County until 1145, I believe. So um, let's take it to this storm down here. Um, let's see if we're getting a better indication of the rotation. Again, I mentioned before with this one, it's going to be a little tougher to pick out just because we're so close to the radar site. But um, somewhere in this area, potentially, we may, uh, we, we can see the rotation. Go back to the velocity signature here. Um, uh, right, somewhere in this area, we're seeing uh, that rotation there just north of Newton. It's about to cross over 231, not too far from the rest area in Dale County. Andrew, I just want to point something out. I was trying to look at, um, at our correlation coefficient. Let's try and pull that up on our, um, on our, yeah, there you go, EOX radar. Let's see if we can pull up that correlation coefficient. Yeah, I don't know if this is an old scan or a new one. I wasn't able to pull it up on my phone earlier, but I'm not seeing quite a debris signature with this one. Let's go back to our, um, our relative velocity. And see, go ahead and you, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, this one's not right. looking as strong, but neither did the first one that they originally put out uh, yeah. for Henry County. And then all of a sudden, you know, it was there. No doubt about it. Keep going, buddy. Yeah, and um, I will say with the Henry County one, that one was actually on the ground before the warning yeah. came out. We yes, did it was. See, we did see going back in the scan that was on the ground for quite a while, and I think it is still on the ground moving into the Fort Gaines, Georgia area right now. But this is where the rotation is, and again, it's going to be a little hard to pick out just because we're the radar site is actually right here in Echo, and we're aiming super low, which is which is great. That means we're getting a surface based uh, observation here, basically, um, because you know with the radar beam, the further out you go, the more and more up in the storm you're looking, you're basically looking at surface level right now. But it, it's also sometimes a deterrent because especially when you get really close to the radar site, it's really hard to see um, because it descends below the radar beam sometimes. So uh, that's why we're a little iffy on the debris signature here. But nonetheless, rotating thunderstorm about to cross 231 between Midland City and Ozark, probably a little bit closer to Ozark, I would say, than Midland City. But nonetheless, you should not be along 231. If you know anyone that is, tell them to pull over at this second uh, because a rotating thunderstorm is about to cross over. And then after that crosses 231, it's going to cross over a very windy Alabama State Route 27 um, and head towards uh, or just south of Echo and should stay uh, north of Midland City. But I know uh, County Road 59 between Midland City and Echo is going to be an area uh, that you don't want to drive along there as well. And just like with the Coffee County storm, it's hard to pick out um, a lot of communities with this as well. But the Ewell community, you need to be in your safe place. North of Sylvan Grove, Echo is where the circle is. That's the radar site. Snow Hill just popped up there as well. Any of these communities I'm calling out, you need to be in your safe place right now. And I want to go back one more time to the Henry County tornado warning. Let's see if that, I think that is fully moved into Georgia now. Um, so let's see, yeah, the hook is now fully into Georgia. So um, if you're in uh, Henry County, I'm going to go and give you the all clear from this storm. And we don't have any damage reports from Henry County yet, do we? Not yet. Haven't seen anything on National Weather Service chat, and uh, but we, it was EMA reported earlier. Yeah. So, EMA reported or on e the ground. Emergency management reported. Okay, yeah. So yeah, still a hook shape with this storm. And it looks like they put out another tornado warning for Clay County. Yeah. You see the red box that's uh, on top of that. Let's go but back that to is our, yeah, furthest west one over in Coffee County. Let's check that one out again. Yeah, so this one still has that hook shape to it. Um, 
it doesn't look all that impressive from a radar standpoint in terms of heavy rain, but uh, you do have that hook shape back here uh, crossing over the Pea River at this point, and it's this area right here where yeah, we're watching. Yeah, just to the southwest of Arcus in Victoria. Yeah, southwest of Arcus, southwest of Victoria. It should stay north of Mixon, but still too close of a call if you're in, if you're in Mixon, Arcus, or Victoria, or on 167 or south of Lowry Mill. You need to be in your safe place right now. And down the line here, we have the Java community. Um, Alabama, I believe that's Alabama State, around 27. Five and, uh, and, okay. 20 and 167 where they meet up there. Yeah, and then the New Hope community as well. If I'm calling out any of these communities or if you're close to any of these communities, you need to be in your safe place right now. So uh, this rotation, if we can zoom it back out just a little bit, uh, this is it right here, uh, just to the southwest, south, southeast of Shady Grove and southwest of Arcus. And go and circle that area. Let's see if we have any debris signature there. Yeah, I don't we'll think do we do. We'll circle this right here. Yeah. And... Uh, and let's go to, there we are. Yeah. We're not seeing any correlation Nothing coefficient yet. coming up with this one. I'll back it up in time, see if there's anything. No, it, it's, uh, we're not getting all the scans in necessarily for that. Um, yeah. But yeah, not seeing any correlation coefficient pop up for any of our uh, recent scans uh, for this area. Yeah, so I would say this is just a rotating thunderstorm at this point, has not yet had enough time here to produce a tornado, uh, but, it could at any time. So again, if you're along the Pea River, if you're northeast of Elba, you need to be in your safe place right now. So here's the original area of rotation that yeah, passed right over Sadie Hill and south of Lee. And it looks like most of that rotation has dissipated. So yeah, again, it's it falling be, apart if pretty it's moving quickly. anywhere, it's going to be moving south of Arcus. Yeah, yeah, it's falling apart here pretty quickly. And this is kind of unlike what we saw with the storm up to the north where that one maintained its intensity. So um, let's go also, back to our Dale County tornado worn storm. Yeah, and it's north starting of to Newton take on that where this shape area a little bit. Is. Yeah, um, let's take it to the velocity and see yeah. if we can pick it out. Um, not quite. Not quite. Yeah, yeah it's, it's probably hard being this close. Yeah, it's probably descended below the radar beam at this point. Somewhere near Waterford and Plainview, just to the eastern side of it, uh, before yeah. you get to 231, that would be the area of rotation. Yeah, right around the Dale County rest area. I'm going to back it up for you a few scans, Andrew. See if yeah. we can find the original area of rotation that they warned it for. There right, it is. Right there. Yeah, there you go. So um, most likely would have been following this sort of a track yeah um, and it's going to be crossing over 27 here next and again it's yeah. really hard to see because the direction it's moving east is right smack dab almost towards the radar site yeah so it looks like it would be somewhere within here yeah uh, so we'll zoom in on a couple of those areas yeah so to the northeast of Plainview heading toward Brown's Crossroad mm -hmm. Ewell uh, as well and Lewis. Snow Hill Lewis those are some communities that are inside of this warning and, yeah. uh, and I think that you guys need to be in your safe place for this rotating, like you said, rotating thunderstorm. No confirmation of a tornado on it, yeah. but a rotating thunderstorm. Yeah, and it is a little concerning, too, how the rotation has descended below the radar beam because mm -hmm. if, there is, if this happens to produce a tornado, the debris signature will be the same thing. It will have descended below the radar beam. Yeah. So it'll be hard to see. So uh, we really need to emphasize the seriousness of this one with that in mind. If you're in portions of Dale County, you need to be in your safe place right now. And it's especially a call to action now from 231 eastward all the way into Henry County as well. If you're in Newville, if you're in Headland, if you're, uh, I'd say Kinsey, you're going to be fine from yeah, this storm. North, north of Kinsey to Newville within that area. Yeah. Yeah, if you're in Headland, Newville, if you're in, uh, I know the CAPS community is out here too, Echo, you need to all be in your safe place. Smallest room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows and doors. And now that we've covered our bases here, and we're going to continue to cover our bases, let's zoom out and give a big view of what's going on right now. So very, we've turned from not active at all to very active. We have three ongoing tornado warnings. We're probably about to lose this one, I would guess. One in Henry County, that one's basically, it hasn't technically expired, but it's no longer a threat to Henry County folks. Yeah, but we, now the focus turns to these two. One for Central Coffee County, I believe that one goes until, or they just canceled that one, which is good. Um, because the rotation is weakened with that one. We were talking about that earlier, but we'll still have to watch it. It's in a very, it's still in a prime environment where it could re-strengthen. And then um, we're watching this one in particular um, as it's moving through Dale County and we'll be moving into southwestern Henry County here in short order. That one goes until noon. And um, concerned about this storm, not only because it's a rotating thunderstorm,
thunderstorm, but it's really hard to see the rotation because we're getting really close to the radar site. And it's the rotation at this point, because we're getting so close to the radar site, it's descending below that radar beam. And it's going to be really hard to see. But just based on the track of this, we do think now it's somewhere in this area if we could take it. To yeah, the Andrew, uh, we're going to come to the desk really quick. So Jordan and I have been monitoring some things behind the scene here. And uh, for those that haven't met Jordan Ambrose, our newest meteorologist here at WDHN, Henry County Sheriff is reporting down power lines, structure damage, trees down. And that would all be most likely on the northern side of Abbeville or within Abbeville itself. So uh, that tornado, I was watching it on radar earlier, and it looked like it was going directly through Abbeville. Um, Potentially, and I'm sure that yeah. you came to the same conclusion as yes. well. So if you are in that area, if you were planning on traveling up 431 and heading toward Abbeville, let's avoid that, that region so they can get some things cleaned up. They've got to do what they've got to do. EMA, as well as anyone that's working on the ground, has got to get things cleaned up before they can get those roads open back up up there. If there are any trees, power lines, things down on the roadways. Of course, if you come across a down power line, Always avoid it. Don't drive over it. Not a safe thing to do. Don't go walking toward it. There may be some water on the ground. It may still be active. It's always a bad situation. So avoid Abbeville if you can today. If you're traveling along 431, just go right on by it. Um, and, uh, and at this point, I'm not saying that Abbeville is, is in danger of another storm. There are more storms out there, but there's no tornado warned storm for Abbeville. It's just the damage in the area that I wanted to bring attention to. So yeah. definitely have damage from a tornado that was confirmed on the ground at one point in Abbeville. Andrew. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we saw that on the radar presentation with the debris that was being lofted earlier. And um, I, I would imagine that's probably not going to be the only reports of damage we get out there. But now our focus is going to shift, thankfully, to just one tornado warning. We did have three at one point. We've lost two of them now, basically. The one in uh, Henry County now basically is out Coffee of Coffee County just expired, and the one in yeah. Henry County no longer a threat to them. Okay, yeah. So now it's just central and eastern Dale County and yes. moving into southwestern uh, Henry County and technically northwestern Houston County is included in this warning, but I yes, think this Dothan is not included in this. Can't can't express that enough. And they yeah. they tried cutting out all of Houston County at this point. Yeah, it looked yeah it looks like they cut out. I think they did cut out. Yeah, all they did. Houston they did. County. It's right along the county line. Yeah. So now at this point, it's uh, eastern and southern Dale County and southwestern uh, Henry County until noon is this tornado warning for this supercell that again is going to get pretty close to the radar site. It might stay a shade south of it, potentially. Yeah, the area of rotation yeah. will probably stay just barely south of that. And yeah. it looks like it's moving almost due east at this point. Yeah. Um, had more of a northeasterly trek to it earlier, heading towards State Road 27, but no longer looking that way. So probably right toward Headland and Newville, somewhere within that area. Looks like yeah. we don't have a ton of communities in there. We'll take that back off. Yeah, um, Alabama State Route 134, I know, is yeah, this Yeah, Sylvian highway. Grove. Let's, let's zoom in, because our tracker's not picking it up. Uh, Lewis, Kirkland's Crossroads. And, uh, and again, this warning goes out until noon today. Blackwood, Head Headland, Southgate, Newville. Those are all communities that will very well be impacted by this tornado warned storm. North yeah. of Napier Field, it looks like it's going to stay just north of the airport. So Sylvan Grove, you guys are definitely folks that want to be in your safe place. While we don't have confirmation of one on the ground, um, there was rotation on this one earlier for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And also Wallace Community College, this, this should stay north, well north of you as well because that's right around Napier Field. Yeah. Um, so Sylvan Grove is probably the community that's going to get the closest to this. Kirkland's Crossroads, Blackwood, Lewis. We named off all these communities. It should stay to the north of Alabama State Route 134. I think that's a good baseline to say if you're north of 134 and south of 27, that's where the danger is going to be with this storm. You need to be in your safe place right now. Smallest room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows and doors. And actually, since I've been mentioning that so much, uh, let's actually take it over to that severe weather graphic of uh, the uh, safe Absolutely. place graphic. So, for example, this house right here, this is where you need to go. So you need to go to an interior room. First of all, you need to be on the lowest floor. You do not want to be on your second story, or if you happen to have a third story, you don't want to be on the second or third story. You need to be on the first floor, the ground level floor. Then you need to get into an interior room, so the middle of the house. And rooms like that are a hallway, a closet, or a bathroom, or you can even go to a room that's underneath a staircase. That's, that counts as the interior portion of your house as well. Let's go ahead and switch it to the next one here. Um, and uh, I know it, said, it talks about covering your head with pillows. You might want to put on a bicycle helmet. Uh, you might want to... Playing through, Andrew. Oh, okay. 
So uh, we'll just go back there, to, there, we uh, go. there it is. Yeah, so cover your head with pillows, blankets, or a helmet, like I mentioned, and that's to protect yourself from debris should a tornado hit your house. The debris comes in from the inside, um, and that way you'll protect the most important part of your body, which is your head. I'm gonna step off here real quick. Now we're gonna step back on. Um, so tornado warning continues, and even though we talked about the safe place graphic, this isn't to say this storm is producing a tornado at this point in time. I would lean towards this is not producing a tornado right now. So it's yeah, really hard to say though because it's so close to the radar site. Yeah, we're not seeing any. Uh, right you know, there, if, maybe. If there is, it would be right there south of Brown's Crossroads. Yeah. Most likely. Yeah, most likely it would be in this area right here. Um, probably right along County Road 59 in Dale County, if I had to guess, or very close to County Road 59 in Dale County or County Road 61. I've traveled up this way many a time, so I do know that it runs, or County Road 59 runs from Midland City up to Highway 27 west of Echo, so somewhere uh, close to County Road 59 is likely where this rotation is right now. If you're in the Lewis community, we've called you out several times, Kirkland's Crossroads, Blackwood, Newville, eventually down the line here, that's moving into Henry County, so Henry County, you, and this is now your second go around now of a tornado warning. The first time it was the northern and central parts of the county. Now we're talking about the western parts of Henry County. So there's our rotation now. It's starting to become, or it's starting to come into full view now. It's starting to separate itself distance wise a little bit from the radar site. So um, it's probably going to split the difference here between Headland and Newville, but uh, because it's going to split the difference between the two cities, I would say in both cities you need to be in your safe place right now. Um, yeah, so we're just letting this roll through over the last 30 minutes so you can see that this thing is moving in an easterly trajectory. Mm -hmm. um, it was a little bit nor more northeasterly earlier, but yeah, I think that anywhere from the radar site and southward, just where this warning is, that's exactly who needs to be in their safe place. Yeah. Uh, Midland City, you guys are not in the warning. You guys are not under a threat of a tornado at this time. Newton, you guys are outside the warning as well. But Headland and Newville, you guys are within it and you need to be in your safe place just in case this thing does. Uh, uh, bring up a little bit more rotation again. Mm -hmm. It was definitely rotating when it was first warned. Let me see if there are any um, any additional comments from the National Weather Service. Not seeing anything. Okay, they're just continuing the um, the and that was six minutes ago that they were continuing that warning. That was when they chopped it back. So um, yeah, not seeing not seeing any additional signs of strengthening within the yeah. storm. No reorganization here. And uh, let me see if we've got any correlation coefficient values that nothing nothing big that sticks out right now yeah not right now but again it's only because we're close to the radar site so we'll have to watch the oh. storm closely once it gets away from it it'll be a little bit easier to see it would be easier to see yes but i, I do think that this one has weakened quite a bit i, I think do, that I most do. of these are going to be uh short-lived things so they've got rotation on them for at least a few scans and then they're gone yeah, yeah i think that the one in abbeville was an exception yeah, that um, was the, the exception. Here. And it still kind of has that kidney bean shape now that it's moved into Georgia, but I yeah. think that tornado warning expired up there in Clay County. Um, but this is not the only storm out there. And again, we're in a prime environment for all threats of severe weather today. We're in that moderate level four out of five risk. And then I would dare say, and Matthew, you can comment on, the, on this, this is a pretty rare phenomenon for June to have a moderate risk. Oh, absolutely, risk. yeah. I was, I was reading some things about it. Highly unusual for us to be getting yeah. tornadoes this time of year, unless it's from a tropical system. Yeah. Um, this is more of a March, April type setup that we yeah, have in place. Yeah. And, and to have all these small supercellular type of storms, highly unusual. Yeah, uh, this absolutely. Time of year. The, these are not your run of the mill garden type variety summer thunderstorms. Yes, we are in the middle of summer, but these are more spring like in nature. You can see we got kind of that supercell structure here where the whole storm itself is rotating and that's going to be the kind of deal we're going the kind of thing we'll be dealing with at least for the next probably hour to two hours with these storms and we still have a few more off to the west so we have one that's moving into enterprise right now but that one uh, not severe at this point this is the only one that's severe or tornadic at this point and it's in effect the tornado warning for another uh, 26 ish minutes um, as it continues to move generally towards Newville and Headland now and uh, is still in Dale County, likely right along County Road 59 between yep. Midland City and 59 Highway 61 within that area. You nailed that earlier, Andrew. Yeah, County Road 61 actually splits off kind of in this fashion and heads off to the northeast. So, yeah, that's near New exactly Hope Church, Mount Carmel uh, Church Cemetery, that area. Um, that's where this tornado warned storm is. Uh, it's it's going to be most likely just south of that. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so, so this area here. Blackwood Church, Concord, Baptist Church, those areas, if you recognize them, that's where this tornado warning storm is heading toward. Yeah, um, and um, actually let's zoom out. We'll yeah. keep it um, paused and now we can put a 25 mile per hour track on it because we do have some communities out ahead of it I think that's going to pick up on. Right down, mm -hmm. yeah, there you go, that'll work. Right there. So Newville right. around 1149. Yeah, it's not picking up on the smaller communities right now. Yeah, it's not picking up on the small communities, but we have mentioned those, Blackwood, uh, Lewis, um, yeah, there was another off. one out here as well, but Newville is the one that sticks out here the most. That's going to be heading your way by 1149. So another 15 minutes till it gets there, but we don't want you waiting till 1149 to take shelter. You need to take cover right now. Smallest room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows and doors. And now to shift over to the Henry County side of things with this storm, you have 431, of course. Um, if we could zoom back into Newville real quick, um, we do have State Route 173 as well as the main highway through Newville. Of course, you have the plant here. Um, I, I'm not sure what type of plant it is, but you have a plant right here that produces some kind of product that's right along 431. You have a Dollar General that's over here as well. You cross over some railroad tracks. That's the general vicinity of where this is headed now um, here in the next likely 10 to 15 minutes yeah. as it continues to push off to the east. Let's and zoom back out some. Um, and, uh, you know, Andrew, the, the most that we can do, again, is saying between Headland and Newville is where this thing's going to be heading, and it yeah. would be likely be closer to the Newville area. Um, yeah. Let me, let's go to Lynx 1 real quick to talk about that severe weather outlook on the day. Uh, Andrew was probably hitting on this early this morning, yeah. and I assume that that outlook came, came in with the moderate risk early this morning? Yeah, that was around midnight. And okay. I was mentioning with this moderate risk, I was thinking the northern portions of our area, more than likely north of 84, and that's exactly what's been. North of 84 yeah. has been where we've had at least one tornado in Abbeville. I think that is probably going to end up being confirmed. Yeah, so uh, this is a pretty crazy setup for this time of year. We've got this uh, subtropical jet that's working in, and, and, um, and because of those winds aloft, that's what's helping grow these storms, create the environment for tornadoes right now, as well as hail, especially later on today in the gusty winds too, and something that we don't typically see. Um, we'll go back to radar. I just wanted to show, you know, we're not the only ones that have this threat. Yeah. We'll go back to radar on links too. Very big moderate um, risk for today. And yeah. I don't think they'll, uh, I don't think they're gonna upgrade it past a moderate. No, absolutely there's no not. Way yeah, we're already, the day's already started, so there's, there's no point in upgrading it at this point. Yeah. Um, so but, yeah, so we'll we'll zoom back in again. This this storm has definitely lost a lot of its structure, at least yeah. from the radar standpoint of OX or OEX as well as up in Montgomery. Not seeing it from there. Uh, let's go to Panama City. Still has a slight hook. Yeah, right there. So there's at least I would say mid-level rotation. Yeah, but this in is this storm. is very much so high in the atmosphere. Yes. Um, here's right your mid-level rotation, like you were saying. There is a little bit, um, and and again, it's going to be between Newville and Headland. Actually, um, I'm leaning toward it now, moving maybe a little bit closer to Headland, but still close enough. Both communities need to be in their safe place yeah. right now. Let me, let me put this into motion here. Yeah, so we're using radar scans that are higher in the atmosphere. Um, they're catching a little bit uh, the different parts of the storm. Typically, you want to get the lowest level possible, um, but uh, unfortunately, it's just not possible from our... Um, Dale County radar right now. Yeah, so and it's it's even more encouraging news the fact that we're seeing the rotation further up in the atmosphere and not lower down in the atmosphere. Yeah. So this thing is not dropping a tornado at this point and most most likely not. Most likely correct. not. Yes. So mid-level rotation with the storm, but mid-level rotation is still rotation. Absolutely. So this, the storm is still rotating and could produce a tornado at any time. Hasn't done it yet, but we're going to continue to watch it and no debris signature at all. Um, from yep. any of our sites here. So that's the good news. Uh, probably some hail falling with this storm. Is this the yeah, Panama you know, let's City let's check one? on that. Um, yeah, yeah there, definitely there's hail probably some storm. small hail that crossed over 231 and, and over 61, like you said, headed towards Blackwood, Kirkland's Crossroad. Let's see if, um, I'll put this into, into motion. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah. yeah, maybe some small hail within this thing as well. Yeah. But it's definitely lost a lot, of, a lot of its structure, as you said, which is the good news. That's the encouraging news that we want to see. Hopefully we can keep that tornado threat brief today, but there is still that hatched area that the Storm Prediction Center put out, so we have to at least mention that an isolated strong tornado is not entirely out of the question yeah. with these did storms. They, they today. upgraded that this morning, huh? Yeah, they did. Um, Basically, like I said, north of 84 um, is where we have that better potential for a strong tornado or two. So um, again, the storm not looking as impressive. That's the good news, but still is rotating at least in the mid levels. And if we could take it back to, I think it was the Panama City scan where it was rotating in the mid levels. Yeah. Uh 
Uh, yeah. Both so. Panama City and Montgomery had some rotation in the mid-level. Yeah, so right there, uh, right around or just north of Sylvan Grove is where this rotation is now. Um, I would venture to say at this point, it should be around the Dale and Henry County line, just given where this is now. Um, and it's going to stay well north of 134. So um, again, I'm going to use 134 as a reference here. If you're north of 134, you need to be in your safe place. If you're south of 134, you're definitely good. Um, so this is going to be um, heading towards Blackwood and Kirkland's crossroads. And then eventually, this is State Route 173, Headland, Southgate, and Newville. You guys are up next for this storm. Get to your safe place right now. While this isn't producing a tornado yet, um, the storm is rotating and, again, still carries the capability to produce at least a brief tornado with this particular storm. Yeah. So, um, Andrew, just to take a, a quick break here. Do want to say that we've got uh, video and um, and pictures and things of damage that we're going to be throwing up here. And just to, yeah, there you go. So there is some of the uh, damage from I believe the Abbeville area where we've got a lot of trees down. Some viewers sending this in. Robert Smith Jr. has gone up there and he's checking things out um, and uh, and going up there. So a lot of trees down is what we see here. Um, and, uh, and, and of course that, you know, we can't tell necessarily right now if it's straight line winds or if it's a tornado that caused these things because we can't see all the directions that the trees are falling. But we did have a tornado reported on the ground. Looks like it's a bunch of tree limbs or smaller trees that have been snapped in half. Um, some uprooted like this one right here. Are these all coming in from Robert or from viewers, Michael? This is Robert. Okay, this is from Robert Smith Jr., a reporter. He's gone up there to the Abbeville area. And do you know, I know State Road 10, he said that there was a, a lot of uh, trees down in that area. Is that on the north side of the city? Uh, do you know off the top of your head? That's all right, that's all right. Uh, I'll look that up real quick. Um, but yeah, this is, the tornado warned storm was warned uh, you know, for all of Abbeville, but it was the north side of the city that it looked like this thing. Okay, State Route 10 goes right through the city itself. So, yeah, this is looks like it's hit most likely around or, or at downtown Abbeville. Um, and, uh, and so, again, like I mentioned earlier, if you're up in that direction, please give the crews their time to get all of this stuff off the roadways, whatever may be on the roads. Looks like a majority of these things have uh, that Robert's collected for us have fallen um, not on roadways. So that's really good signs uh, there because last thing we want, of course, are more issues caused afterwards. So there were also reports of some power lines down, according to the um, sheriff up there in, in Abbeville. So we don't want, you know, we don't want folks driving across down power lines. That's something that you want to avoid. Once we get more video and more pictures, we'll make sure to put that on air and online as well on WDHN.com. Um, so again, this, is, this isn't saying that there is a further severe weather threat for Abbeville, at least not currently, but there is still the possibility of more storms to be moving through the area. Let's go back to radar on Lynx 2, and, uh, and we're going to zoom all the way out, and we're going to show everyone where these storms are at. Um, on, there you go, on Lynx 2. And uh, there is the uh, severe thunderstorm for the Eufaula area up there in Barber County. Um, lots of small storms all across the region. Um, lots of small storms throughout southeast Alabama. And many of these do have hooks to them. You see this one between Tuskegee and, and Union Springs. That one's got quite the hook to it. Um, so there for Cuthbert. That's the second one for Randolph County, Georgia today. Yeah. So more, more tornado warnings down in southwest Georgia. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, it's a very active day, just like mm -hmm. you were saying earlier, Andrew, very active day. You can head back up there on the wall. Yeah. Um, and we'll keep talking about this tornado warned storm that's now moving out of Dale County and into yeah. Henry County. Yeah, I would say I would say that's the case. I wouldn't give the all clear yet for far eastern Dale County. I would say give it another five minutes, okay. and then you're good to go in Dale County. But um, next stop on the on the track of the storm, it's going to be Head, Headland and Newville. If you're in either of those two cities right now, you need to get to your safe place immediately. I don't want you waiting until 11.49 when this storm gets right to your door. I want you to go ahead and get to your safe place right now at this second so you're prepared for this storm to come over your area. Even though it hasn't produced a tornado yet, we talk about it's capable of producing a tornado. So we want to lean on the side of caution here, and we want you to get to your safe place right now if you're in Headland or Newville, and if you're along 431, that's another road you don't want to be traveling on right now. If you're traveling through Headland, for example, there's a lot of restaurants, lots of gas stations right in, along 431 in Headland. Pull over to one of those, they'll let you in, go to, your, go to a safe, secure 
one of those buildings and get away from windows and doors, go to a bathroom, for example, you'll be good to go um, there in Headland if you can pull over in one of those places. And you can pull over at the Dollar General, for example, in Newville, if you happen to be going south, coming south from Abbeville, or if you happen to have already passed Headland, because I don't want a soul on the road here on 431, uh, just in case we do have something down. But I, the current thinking is that we don't have anything down, but we still have a rotating oh, thunderstorm. Yeah, 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 for sure. From This is from our Montgomery radars. So again, it's higher up in the atmosphere, yeah. so it does look like there's at least mid-level rotation, but maybe not quite as much down near the yeah. surface. We'll go back to, uh, to our Dale County radar here. It's the closest one to it. Um, and if there is any rotation, um, again, that, that went back to EOX. So we want our base level here and yeah, it's still it's still really hard to pick out. Yeah, yeah it'd be somewhere within here. Right there, yeah. So again, if you're in Headland, Newville, um, actually, let's zoom down and look at some of the more local streets that are. Um, or it might be a little bit further yeah, north. Yeah, maybe just a little bit further north, and that's why it's really hard to pick these things out right now. Yeah. Uh, and with how close can, it is to the radar and the fact that I do think that this thing is weakening. Yeah, you can still see, even though this thing is weakening, it's got that traditional supercell shape and yeah. where it's getting all of its energy, it's this inflow right here uh, where you got that warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico coming in from the southeast and that's where the storm is rotating is where we get that counterclockwise rotation. And it looks like now they've they trimmed this tornado warning down big time, yes. which I think is good that news. That was the right move. So for anyone that's in, now this is just Henry County, no longer Dale County. Yeah. Kirkland's Crossroads, Blackwood folks, up toward Newville. Headland, they've taken out of it. I think that that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, so anyone that's to the western side of 431 there, south of Newville, you guys are the ones that have the threat of a tornado. Um, it, and and this, is, this is not a clear cut and dry one like the one that was in Abbeville, where we could yeah. see a debris signature, we could see uh, the rotation. And this one isn't as clear cut and dry. Um, and, uh, and, but we're going to stay with it because it's still a tornado warned storm. Yeah, absolutely. So Hevlin, I would say at this point, you can come out of your safe place. But if you're in Newville, you definitely need to be in your safe place right now. State Route 173, I mentioned before, US 431. We've got various county roads, too, as well. Um, and I would say if you're west of Tumbleton as well, if you're southwest of, I think that's Danzy to the east of 431, yeah. you need to be in your safe place as well. So along 431 all the way from Headland to Danzy. I, I, would I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that necessarily they need to be in their safe place at this point because it does, again, it looks like this thing is weakened quite a bit. Yeah. I, on alert. On alert on is alert, a good yeah. call. Absolutely Making sure on that alert. you guys are continuing to watch. There's no need to be heading into the bathroom and, and hanging out there for the next 30 minutes when the storm's a slow mover and it's not necessarily potentially going to make it to you. Again, it's tornado worn, but that, that rotation has weakened quite a bit. Let's check out our shear rate here. We're not seeing any over the area mm -hmm. of interest near Kirkland's Crossroads or, uh, or Blackwood. And we're going to check on our correlation coefficient, and it's just so discombobulated right now. I'm not seeing anything in there either. Yeah, and that's good news. So hopefully the storm will continue on that weakening trend, but it is heading, as it continues further off to the east, we could say it's heading into a more favorable environment the further and further east it heads, a, a place that's been untapped. So we're going to have to continue to watch it. But hopefully these trends continue. Good news is, uh, even though we still have the tornado warning, I would say at this point it's mid-level rotation. So um, we're pretty much, I would say at this point, just waiting for this tornado warning to expire. Wouldn't you say so, Matthew? Let's say that again, Andrew. Uh, when, would you say at this point we're waiting, just waiting for this tornado uh, warning to expire? Most likely, yeah. It's most got another likely. 12, 13 minutes on it. goes until 12 o'clock. Um, and Jordan brought up a good point here. We're going to come back to the desk really quick. Um, obviously, we've had the damage that we reported earlier from tornadoes, but tornadoes aren't the only threat today. Yes, today, later into tonight, there's also another threat. So just because a storm has passed through your area does not mean that we won't see another threat tonight. That's right, and that threat could include isolated tornadoes as well, but also damaging wind gusts. So this is going to be a large group of storms, most likely that'll move in instead of these individual storms. Yes, and large hail will also be a threat yeah. throughout tonight. So make sure you have your WDHN app and stay ready and have your emergency alert apps ready. Absolutely. To go. So and again. And with that large hail, one inch or greater, or at one inch, is the severe criteria. And there is the possibility of getting hail two plus inches that's larger than golf balls. So typically, you think of a quarter, that's one inch hail. That's going to cause some pings in your car, right? Some dents in the roof of your car. But if you get golf ball sized hail or larger, that could crack windshields, crack your windows in your house as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get those things to be happening. We're going to get a lot of insurance adjusters out there. Last thing you want to do is be taken advantage by somebody when they're when they're going around to check on roofs and they say, oh, I'm from out of town and I'm, I'm here to help give you a discounted rate. 
don't listen to those people. Always go local and, and get that, that adjustment from somebody that's from nearby. Let's go back to our radar scans here. Newville is the, the area that this thing is going to be heading toward at this time. Um, on links, there you go. And, uh, and you still see that hook. Andrew, you can go back up there and point it yeah. out. It's, uh, it's not quite as well defined, but yeah. Um, Andrew, step off the screen real quick. And, uh, and they're going to bring you up. Guys, go ahead and put him back up there for me. Um, all right, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, so here's where our hook is. It's, uh, it, it's, it's pretty visible at this point in time. This is a very traditional looking supercell, but the good news is it's not necessarily at this point acting like a supercell of this kind of caliber structure wise, because the rotation at this point continues to weaken as we speak. But as a course of least regret, Newville, we still want you to be on alert for this storm as it continues to move off to the east. It's going to basically move right over your area. And then actually before it gets to 431, it's going to be out of this tornado warning box. And have they mentioned anything in the National Weather Service chat if they're going to extend this maybe as a severe thunderstorm warning? Uh, no, I've, I've asked them for additional thoughts on it. They haven't given anything more. Um, so I do think that they'll probably allow this thing to expire. It's not out of the realm of a possibility that they would put a severe thunderstorm warning on it with tornado possible tag, yeah. but I, I just I just don't think it's warranted right now. They may do it, I just don't think that it's warranted at this point. Yeah, I, I would agree. And again, this thing is weakening, which is good news, but we just want you in Newville to be on your heels watching this storm. So now that we've covered that, um, let's now zoom out and take a broad view of what's going on. This is probably yeah. going to be the next storm to watch here. Right now, it's not severe but we're going to watch it. And it's got more of a linear structure to it than the supercell structure that we saw earlier. And I would imagine the rotation with that is not all that impressive. But yeah, let's, let's zoom on down to it. We'll check out the rotation with it. Yeah, um, nothing. Yeah, nothing on there, nothing on storm relative either. Yeah. Uh, no additional shear that's associated with this storm. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. But I would assume a decent amount of lightning, lots of energy with these storms moving through Newton. Yeah, uh, a decent uh, amount. The one that's got the most is up there in northern Henry County. Yeah. That's going to be a storm to watch as well, um, but it should be moving out of Henry County pretty soon. Um, we got another tornado warning. This is not in our viewing area. Just wanted to mention it. Um, I was mentioning Fort Gaines earlier. If you knew someone that lived in Fort Gaines, give them a call. I would say the same call to action if you know anyone that lives either in Cuthbert, Georgia or Shelman, Georgia, Randolph County, Georgia, tell them to get to their safe place. There's a tornado warning up that way. That's not in our viewing area, but it's close by. And I know there's yeah. people around here um, that are probably relatives. That all right, let's focus back in on northern Henry County. Let's see what's going on up there. It looks just like it's heavy rain with lots yeah. of lightning, lots of positive strikes as well. I'm going to mm -hmm. pull that up. Um, positive strikes mean the yellow ones that you see on there, those are the ones that cloud to ground. Those yeah. are the ones that are deadly compared to negative strikes usually within cloud to cloud. Yeah. Um, so and, oh, and I can see down there we got the storm report. Yeah, that's the storm report uh, along State Road 10, um, I believe, yeah, north of Grabal. Um, yeah, so that's north of uh, right actually close to where the Yellowwood uh, I went, I guess Yellowwood Distribution Building and the Yellowwood Water Tower is off of 431. That's where that tornado report looks like it was. So it probably crossed very close to that across 431. But good news is that storm is over in Georgia. This yeah, storm that, that's here, a long gone storm. Yeah, so we're going to go back down to this tornado warning. Again, it's lost a lot of its structure. Actually, I think the hook is gone at this point. Yeah, too. yeah, relatively. And we don't see any, um, yeah. any rotation within it. So. Uh, at least not at the surface, and we'll go a little bit higher in the atmosphere like we were doing earlier. There's yeah. still some rotation higher yeah. up n above Newville, not north of Newville, but above it above in the it, atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we'll check from Panama City. Again, very weak. Very, very this weak. rotation is even uh, further away from uh, where we would typically expect it to be if it's going to be producing a tornado. Yeah. So. so and, and if we were to check radar from, uh, from Montgomery, I mean, it just looks like a discombobulated blob. Yeah, which is the good news. Hopefully that trend continues with this storm. So we're just waiting for that tornado warning basically to expire. Um, let's go back up to the one in northern Henry County because that's a pretty electric storm quite literally because of the lightning. Um, it's mainly north of Abbeville, the Lawrenceville community getting in on this thunderstorm with, as we mentioned, a good amount of positive lightning strikes, the ones that hit the ground. Um, also Scottsboro Crossroads, um, Otho, uh, Alabama State Route 95 is out here. Of course you have Lake Eufaula, 431 as you go from Henry County into southern and Barber County. So. Um, this storm is going to be heading generally up 431 towards Eufaula, and there's a severe thunderstorm warning up towards Eufaula as well that uh, I know of. Um, and 
Uh, that's all the warnings we have right now. So again, this is the only one that we have in the, the area. One, yes. It expires at 12 o'clock Central Time for yeah. Henry County. Uh, but it's getting ready to outrun its warning. We've only got another six minutes left on this thing. And, um, and again, it's going to cross out of the warning box toward 431. No expectation for this thing to be rewarned. Uh, not seeing any indication of that from National Weather Service in Tallahassee. And they're really good about communicating these things. So yeah. um, if they're not saying it, it's unlikely that they're going to extend the warning on this thing. No reports of damage, no reports necessarily at this point, no reports of damage and no reports of a tornado that was associated with that storm. The only one that we've had is where you see that little red dot up there and uh, over Abbeville, right so, uh, or north of Abbeville, so. Yeah, and uh, at this point now, it's gonna be a gusty wind and hail threat, I would say. Yeah, let's check the hail, I was yeah. about to do that, this is a good point, point. Um, and it, maybe a tiny bit. That, maybe. that would, yeah, this is not concerning at all. It looks like just a very heavy uh, rain event is what this thing is right now. Yeah, um, and with those pinks, if it's not hail, that's extremely heavy rain that's yeah. coming down, just downpour type rain and I would imagine we have a lot of lightning with this storm as well so if you're traveling along this section of 431 between Newville and Abbeville take it slow out there don't rush to get to your destination I you don't want to get into a, a hydroplaning type accident on a four-lane highway like that so just take it slow if you're going along that stretch of road um, really I would recommend I guess uh, waiting it out until the storm passes it's not going to take too much longer actually it's out of Newville now so um, I would say Newville, you're in the clear from this storm. Would you yeah, say so? Yeah, absolutely. Newville's in the clear of any sort of threat from this storm. Danzy, Oak Grove, um, you know, they're, they're getting heavy rain, but that's yeah. really about it. Um, you know, it's just south of Caps there. So it's, this storm isn't nearly as concerning as what it looked like earlier. Yeah. It's out of the tornado warned box at this point, or at least the area that we would expect a potential tornado would be is out of the box. And, um, and the warning goes until 12. We're gonna stick with it. It's only a little bit more than four minutes from now. Yeah. Um, so we'll stay with it until 12 o'clock, but then at that point, uh, we'll make some decisions to go off air, especially if there's no, uh, no additional tornado warnings. And we're gonna keep, we'll be watching everything from behind the scenes. Um, and, and we'll do more coverage on Facebook if there's severe thunderstorm warnings that come out. Yeah. Um, but it does look like, and Andrew, you can correct me if I'm wrong, does look like the only for sure tornado that we have had so far was the one in Henry County. And then the one that passed northwest of Elba, that one was uh, a, a definitely had some signatures um, and, uh, and or tornado signature on it, at least in terms of rotation. But mm -hmm. it doesn't look like uh, we've had any reports of damage from it, Andrew. Yeah, I would say so. The only confirmed a tornado at this point is uh, Henry County. And there's the tornado report right there. We know for sure that we likely had one on the ground there because we saw the lofted debris. We saw the, the difference in the correlation coefficient uh, where you have the magenta is all of the precipitation and then you had that blue and green and yellow that stuck out. Uh, that was an indication clearly of something other than rain that was being picked up by the radar. So that's where that tornado report is now, Abbeville. I would imagine we'll get more reports of uh, damage potentially from Abbeville as we go through the next little bit. Good news is um, I would say if you're in this tornado warning polygon, you can come out of your safe place. You don't need to be in there anymore. This storm has passed all of Dale County and it's in Henry County now, but uh, the danger is over from this storm in Henry County, I would say. We're just waiting for this tornado so. warning box to expire, basically. Yeah, and that, and that expires again in about two and a half minutes from now. Um, that that tornado warning box does go away, but the storm, it's still present, still moving through central Henry County, just to the east of Newville now. So Newville points east, you've still got this storm. It's strong, um, but it, it's, you know, primarily just heavy rain. Still has a bit of that V notch in there on the eastern yeah. side. And uh, yeah, you'll point to that for me. Right. So on the, on the eastern side, not the inflow notch, but anyway, that's all right. Um, so yeah, this storm, it's now on the eastern side or right along 431 and heading towards State Road 95. We're not expecting this thing to go tornado warned again at this point. Yeah. Um, and just doesn't look to be that intense. Yeah, but uh, next up for this uh, storm, even though it's not tornadic anymore at this point, uh, Northern Early County, you're gonna be in on this next, Haleburg, uh, Miller, uh, Balcom, Tumbleton. Does, does look like it, it uh, that structure, again, not improved. the eastern side of it, but the western side has... Uh, yeah, right there. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's see. It's picked back so, up again, structure-wise, but... We're not seeing any not seeing opposing any. winds, but we are seeing, um, you know, the storm structure pick up just a little bit, but no winds that are 
opposing movement with each other, so it doesn't look like they're circulating around each other right now. And this storm could be cycling, potentially. That's a possibility, yes. Possibility, yeah. Even though it hasn't produced a tornado to our knowledge, it could just be cycling. Um, I know with the one up in Abbeville, we've got some video of it, uh, and it hasn't come in just yet, but we've got some video of the storm itself, and we'll probably show that at 5 and 6 tonight of the rotation within that storm. Um, and for those, of course, obviously you tuned in for the news earlier and you were hoping to catch some stories and you guys can come back here to the desk. You were hoping to catch some stories uh, on WDH and news, but, um, you know, there was there was not any news. You know, everything was weather today. Everything was weather. So for those that wanted to catch the news stories, you can catch them on WDHN.com. Of course, we'll have more uh, additional news at five and six as well. All right, looks like we've got the one, the video of the Abbeville storm uh, from earlier today. Go ahead and throw that up for me uh, as soon as you guys can. And this is the rotation within the storm. I haven't seen it myself. Definitely, that's a very large, very large portion of the storm lowering. Um, and that, that, that is incredible video. In fact, the best video that I've ever seen uh, down here of a very large thunderstorm. I've seen some of small, and you can see the rotation there. It's perfect. I'm going to head up on the wall. Is that is that video going to be on the green screen behind me, guys? If you guys could... Uh, get that up there and allow me to walk up there you can you can see this thing spinning around here I mean it is absolutely phenomenal video that we've got in here mm. and uh, and again you're you, this is not typical for us to see down here in summer in southeast Alabama you can hear the sirens in the background back but way. yeah this is just rotating around this huge wall cloud or, or portion of the mesocyclone that has dropped down and this thing definitely had the structure of a supercellular storm Andrew it was showing that uh, earlier today just before 11 o'clock is when this thing was moving through the Abbeville area uh, but there is no doubt about it that this is rotation at the base of the thunderstorm and and there is a tornado that likely at this time I don't know exactly when or what time this tornado or this video was taken but we can't see past the trees here but I have no doubt that there was a tornado that was being dropped at that point so some sort of funnel was coming out of that but people will see this and they'll say, oh my gosh, it's a massive tornado. Well, in here you can barely see some clearing. There may not be a tornado in the entire thing, but there's no doubt that at the bottom of that thunderstorm that there is a rotating, bare minimum rotating wall cloud or mesocyclone at the bottom of it. Um, so yeah, incredible video that we had sent in to us. So thank you, Jeff Hicks, for sending this in. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, and uh, Was that which is off 431? Okay, yeah, yeah, that was off 431 earlier. So. Um, yeah, phenomenal video there. We'll go back to radars to show you guys that we've actually and put that up on the green screen for me. Again, the most convincing video that you could come or have come out of a storm like this. So this is our storm that was tornado one that came out of Dale County and at this point has fallen apart quite a bit. Um, guys, let's go back to EOX if we can um, and go back to EOX. There you go. So it does it does have that structure to it here. Let's go to our velocity. And, uh, and see what we've got going on there. So velocity, not, haven't seen a couplet earlier. It looks like we've got some greens that are starting to return back toward the storm though. So this is the spot to watch here. Uh, Andrew, if you could find some of the smaller communities there between 95 and 431, that would be fantastic. Do that on Google Maps for me and we'll start calling them out. Brown's, Brown's Crossroad toward Miller, that's where we have this potential area of rotation here. We don't have a warning on this storm. It was tornado warned earlier. We're going to stay with it for a few more minutes here. Um, bare minimum, we're going to get at least one or two more scans to come in before we make any decisions to go off air. Uh, but this is going to be moving toward Barnes Miller north of Haleburg. There is no warning on this storm. It was tornado warned just a couple of minutes ago. Originally was warned about 45 minutes ago, I think. Um, so again, Brown's Crossroad area, that's where this potential rotation is. Let's go back to our radar, or to our reflectivity, and, um, and here you go. So we've got some of the, this is an inflow notch here. So we've got this wrapping around the southern side of the storm. This is all out ahead of the worst part of the storm, but this is where the heaviest of the rain is going to be. So oftentimes, if there is a tornado within a storm and you're on the southern side of it, it's not even raining for you. You just see a large, very dark cloud ahead of you sometimes. Like in that last video that we saw, you can see rotation within the storm, but it's not even raining. Then there are folks that are out ahead of it or on the northern side of it. They're getting pelted with very heavy rain, and they're thinking this is the worst thing in the world, but they're not even seeing the, the, the worst part of the storm just yet. So again, no confirmation, no warning on the storm right now. Wouldn't, be, wouldn't surprise me if they did decide to put 
a warning, either a severe thunderstorm warning with a tornado possible tag on this thing, or the possibility of a tornado warning itself on this storm. Andrew, if you could type into the chat and ask them what their plans are for the Henry County storm, because that structure has definitely redeveloped here. Um, and, uh, and let's go to Montgomery's, uh, Montgomery's velocity, Jordan. And, uh, and we'll, we'll go to their velocity instead of the, the reflectivity. Um, and so we can see, yeah. So you still see the red and the green touching higher in the atmosphere, but not so much of that lower, closer to the surface. Of course, if there's going to be a tornado, you're gonna have, you're gonna have that area of rotation all the way up through and through. So um, especially at the surface though. So when you're missing it at the surface, that's our clear cut indicator of whether or not there is or isn't a tornado, or at least radar indication. Uh, let's take that off of there for me and we'll go to Panama City's uh, velocity and we'll see what they've got going. They've just got some brighter reds that are moving away from the radar and then some darker reds going toward it. So uh, not as helpful here. Let's do Panama City's storm relative. Um, let's see what the, yeah, and there you go. There's your green and your red that's touching near each other, near Balcom. So uh, again, this is higher in the atmosphere though. This is not at the surface. Um, let's go back to EOX and, uh, and get that one back on here for the velocity. And is this storm relative? Okay, that looks like that one's, that one's coming from further away, most likely. Let's go back to EOX, um, and uh, there you oh. go. All right, so right in here would be the area of potential rotation, if there is any. You see how it's missing values in general? I think this may be our storm relative product that we've got pulled up here, and that's fine, but it's missing these values, so it's taking into consideration the storm uh, movement as well, not just the storms. There you go, there you go. So there's our, our green and, and our red that's coming together here. Um, and, uh, and if we could zoom out just a touch, that would be phenomenal. So these winds are moving away from this radar that's right up in here. Yes, Andrew? New tornado warning for Clay, Early, and Henry. Okay, so yeah, this storm is going to be tornado warned here, and I'm glad that we stuck with it. Um, of course, you know, we had, we had, at first it really looked like this thing was falling apart, but then we started to see that structure come back together. We're going to go, yes, Andrew? So I just want to give you some parameters on this. Um, okay. So it's... The speed is picked up to 40 miles per hour, okay. and it is uh, until 12:30 Central Time, 1:30 Eastern Time, and it's still radar indicated rotation. Awesome. All right, guys, we're going to go to Links One, and I'm going to do it from the uh, the wall up there. And uh, there you go. Thank you. So we've got we've got a new tornado warned storm. This is for Henry County. This was the one that was warned earlier over in Dale County, but at this point, and uh, and hit play for me over there, Jordan, if you could, um, on the back computer. That's all right, I got it, gentlemen. Um, so, again, we've got this tornado warned storm for Henry County, and we're going to, let's see if we can get this off of here. Source cannot be located. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna stick with link two, and Jordan's gonna take control um, and help me out there. So links two is what we're on, and here is our new tornado warned storm. You can see the hook with it, um, and this thing, and is it, is it jumping there? There you go. Um, here's the hook within that storm heading toward 95, coming out of Abbeville. So this is well south of Abbeville, who already had their own tornado earlier today. Here is your rotate, or here is your hook. Here's your inflow notch, and uh, and no need to put a tracker on this thing. It's not going to pick up any of our communities, unfortunately. Let's put. Um, let's go to EOX's uh, rate, or excuse me, reflectivity. Well, we're on that one. There you go. That's what I wanted. You knew what I wanted. You can see some brighter reds in here now, and you can take that off. It goes until 1230. Brighter reds in here and some green. While they're not necessarily touching, this is actually the area of rotation most likely. So let's go back to reflectivity to show the rain. Here's where it's wrapping up. I'm going to leave my finger there. Now let's go back to our velocity. And that is the most likely area of rotation is right in here. So it's still to the west of 95 here. If you, to the unexperienced eye, you would think, okay, red and green's over here, but that's not the likely area of rotation. It's actually back in here. Let's see if we can get storm relative up. And, uh, and there you go, there's our green and red. That's exactly what we're looking for. So remember earlier I said that we've got a loss of values here and there was no red in there. Now it is formed. I wouldn't doubt that this thing is trying to put down a tornado right now. I think that this was the perfect time for them to put that tornado warning on it. Um, Andrew, find me some small communities between Abbeville and Haleburg along 95 that I can call out here. And let's zoom in on that spot, Jordan. 
Um, there you go. So Miller, this is going through. We called it earlier. Brown's crossroad area said, hey, you know, you got to be alert on this thing. Now I want you in your safe place. It's actually probably to your eastern side. Miller, this is heading towards you within the next couple of minutes. Let's go a little bit further to the northeast. That's going to be Barnes. Barnes probably wants to be in their safe place or south of Barnes. Anyone between Barnes and Haleburg, I know that there's probably no road that goes directly between the two, but between those two areas, you've got to be in your safe place because this thing may be putting down a tornado here soon. Andrew, what you got for me? Uh, there's no communities I could pick out on Google Maps, but okay. just want to name off some county roads. Henry County Road 26, okay. 28, and 57 are three that are off of 95. 26, 58, 57? 26, 28, and 57. 26, 28, and 57 are all roads that are within this area that this tornado warned storm is passing over. So Andrew's called out some of those roads for you. If you live in that area, especially if you're in a mobile home, try and get into that centermost area of your of your building of your structure that you're in this isn't a situation where i say you got to run out and go find somewhere else we don't want you outside we want you inside now this is probably a smaller tornado it's very tight rotation here if there is a tornado let's do our uh, correlation coefficient from eox and uh, and we're not uh, you know maybe over rounds crossers we're losing a little bit of those values maybe but uh, i i'm not confident in that just yet i'd need one more scan to see that um, take it back a couple of scans if you can um, and Andrew show him how to do that there you go yeah. um, all right so yeah I'm not seeing I'm not seeing it happen in just a bit. and go ahead and take it forward yeah I'm not necessarily seeing any loss of correlation uh, coefficient here let's zoom back out some because looks like they just put some sort of new warning yeah they put a new severe thunderstorm warning out to the east as well so let's go back to reflectivity and uh, from EOX. Yes, Andrew. So that new severe thunderstorm warning is Henry, Dale, and Clay, and it's tornado possible. Tornado possible. I figured by the yeah. way that they drew that thing, usually with the tornado possible tag, they will draw it in a much more linear fashion instead of a very large um, from north to south type of warning. They've done this more large east to west, and so they're giving a track on this thing to be heading northeast toward Abbeville, who already had their own tornado earlier today. So this is a tornado possible tag. This is a tornado warned storm. Let's zoom back in to the tornado warned storm here and, uh, and see what's going on with that one. And we're going to use our uh, velocity here as it's moving across 95. Here are those real bright red. And let's go to storm relative. That's actually going to give me a better look. My bad. Bright reds and the greens touching here as it's crossing over 95. And you said uh, State Road 26 was in that area? Uh, Henry County Road 26, 28, and 57 26, are all along 28, that stretch. 28, 57 are all along this stretch here. Um, and this is going to be the spot to see it's due east of Newville, due east of Newville, that we could potentially have um, a tornado forming at this time. So the structure on this storm is really good. We're going we're gonna to go back to reflectivity, and we're going to let this one play. Go ahead and hit play for me, Jordan. And uh, I do want to mention, too, um, they're watching the storm behind this one for a tornado warning also. I think that's why they put the severe yes, thunderstorm warning the tornado possible thunderstorm warning tag. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right. And Abbeville is right under that severe thunderstorm warning. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And it covers a good chunk of Henry County, actually, uh, the northern and central part of Henry County. So if you happen to be out um, cleaning any damage in Abbeville, I would head back indoors at least for a little bit until this storm that's to the southwest passes yeah absolutely all right looks like our hand tracker's down for the day so we're gonna have to keep depending on each other here gentlemen um all right so jordan um i need you to pull up the go ahead and pause it at the end here and let's pull up the um dothan v uh velocity for me all right Storm relative. There you go. Yeah, storm relative is the best one that we can use here. So here's your red, here's your green, right over the Miller community north of Haleburg. So anyone in the Miller community, I definitely want you guys to be in your safe place. Get to that innermost room. Make sure that your head is covered. You can always take a pillow in there. That can help out. Uh, baseball helmet, football helmet, that sort of thing. That's going to enable you to protect your head and your neck a little bit better as well. This is going to be just to the south of Barnes. So between Miller, Barnes, and Haleburg, a triangular pattern right here, that's where this thing is going to be moving. It's almost moving due east, I think, at this point. So it's going to be crossing over into Early County, and it's going to stay just to the south. And I always mess this one up, so I'm not even going to say it, but you see it on here. Um, 
Urquhart, I guess is how you would say that one. So just to the south of them um, and south of Barnes at this point. So if you are in Barnes, you're in the warning. I want you to be in your safe place, but I do think that this is going to pass south of you if there is a tornado. Um, we Again, you see a loss of values here, but you still see the green right here. This is the spot. This is the spot where we would have potential it's rotation right between Haleburg and Barnes. Um, and here you go, if we're on regular velocity instead of storm relative, the green and red are at least near each other. Um, Andrew, I think you may have hit it on the head earlier when you were saying that this thing may be cycling. And so that's why yeah. we didn't want to go off the air yet because we knew that there was a possibility, it looked unlikely at the time, but a possibility that this thing would revamp, and it absolutely did. So that's why we have that full coverage here at WDHN. We want to make sure that we hit all the bases, we don't allow anything to get by us, that we give you every piece of detail and information that we possibly can about a storm like this that is now tornado worn. Um, let's go back to, uh, you know what, let's check Montgomery's um, velocity higher up and see what they got here. Yeah, so Miller to Barnes area. This is again higher up in the atmosphere. Let's go to Panama City's velocity, see what they've got going on. Not quite as uh, clear cut and dry there, um, but all right. So we'll go back to EOX. Again, I just wanted to check higher in the atmosphere to see what kind of uh, return values that we were getting up there within this storm. At the surface, especially when it was over Miller just a minute ago, it looked like there was potentially uh, some pretty good rotation there. Let's go to correlation coefficient. And, uh, and check our debris tracker. And we will, uh, let's see, yeah, not getting anything well defined. Take it back one scan for me. OK. So from Brown's Crossroads to Miller, if there's something on the ground, we'll see a loss of values here. So take it forward one scan. OK. Not necessarily seeing anything yeah. of particular uh, interest mm -hmm. at this point. Back to reflectivity here on our radar from EOX. Yeah, this is going to be right over, right yeah, over Miller and moving toward Barnes. So within it here, bring bring it back a little bit more northward so we can um, the other direction. Uh, other direction, yeah. There, there you go. go. All right, and uh, and again, this storm is moving due east here, getting ready to cross state lines within probably the next 10 minutes or so. Is it moving at 25 or 30, Andrew? It's moving at 40 actually. At 40, okay, a little bit faster than some of the other ones. Yeah, and I wanted to point out a road that Eric. Eric Hart community yeah. is on. Uh, that's Georgia State Route 39. Just wanted to call okay. that out because that's a heavily traveled road in southwest Georgia. If you live along that road, get to your safe place. All right. Now let's go back further to the west, and we're going to check out the storm that's over in Dale County moving into Henry County as we speak. This is not tornado worn, but it does have a tornado oh. possible tag on it. So this storm, and we'll pull it up north a little bit here, this that's, that's not it's probably going to be moving right. Yeah, this is going to be the portion of the storm of interest here. So guys, let's drag this up a little bit further north for me and uh, there you go it's going to be heading toward the Newville area if we can get our velocity on there um, that would yeah so it's not it doesn't seem well put together by any means it doesn't seem well put together right now when it comes to the velocity um, but in here is going to be the main area of interest so I think on the southern side of this warning as it moves north or around the Newville area or potentially right up in here again this is really hard to see when it's so close to the radar sometimes um, and let's go back to our reflectivity. Yeah, this is, uh, we may need to put this one into motion so we can gather our senses here on this one. So go ahead and let it play out. Um, yeah, just let it play out over the last 30 minutes. And this is where the last storm was, and it has that hook shape. Yeah, actually, as of the last scan, but it's kind of a similar deal like what we saw with the last storm where it's probably descending below the radar beam. It's going to be hard to see. Yeah, it is. It is pretty difficult to see when it is this close to the radar. Sometimes um, every once in a while when you have a very well defined rotation, it's, it's super easy to see when it's close to the radar. But this one's just not quite as well defined. Um, lots of heavy rain with it. You guys can pause it and we'll take it. Um, and we'll take it from there. Go ahead and pause it at the end. Lots of heavy rain that's moving into Newville right now. Do we have any? Uh, let's check the hail track on this thing and see if there's any hail associated with this storm. And, and it looks like, yeah, they may have, uh, that's the mosaic. Um, so maybe some, some hail within this storm. Go ahead, Andrew. Okay, so this tornado warning that they just put out is not for our viewing area, but it's for anyone that's in Eufaula. They just okay. put an observed tornado warning for Quitman right. County. If anyone is in Eufaula. Let's, let's go back yeah. to our reflectivity. Yeah. Um, and zoom out a little bit and so we can show the overall view. 
Uh, um, they do have one up in Barber County. Okay. Yeah, it looks like so. Barber County does have a tornado warning on that storm, but uh, and you can actually oh, see. Oh, right over the city. Right, right over, over the city. city. Um, and then they've got the observe tag for those that are to the east. So again, that's um, not in our viewing area, but want to give a shout out to the folks that are in Eufaula. Go ahead and get into your safe place. This thing definitely has a nasty hook to it. And, uh, and you can see the red and the green here in your Tulis and you follow. That's where this area of rotation is. All right, let's zoom back out, gentlemen. We're going to head back down to our area. Wanted to give that shout out to anyone watching from you follow, though. Get to your safe place. Anyone east of you follow, it's going to become your problem here next over the state lines in Georgia. Dale Henry and Early. Is that for Dale County? Yep, that's the, the back, the storm in the okay. back of the, of the first tornado warning. It's okay. Dale Henry and Early until 1 p.m. Central Time. All right, so let's zoom in on that down there near Headland. There you go. Yep. So this thing's moving a little bit more easterly than what they were were thinking uh, previously. So pretty interesting there, quite a change in trajectory of the storm motion. But that's why we were saying it was on the southern side of this warning box of the severe thunderstorm warning box. And now it's it's warned for a due east trajectory. So Newville is included in this again. Kirkland's Crossroads and Black Road. You just had or Blackwood. You just had your tornado warning earlier. Now you've got a brand new one. We want you to be in your safe place. Anyone that's from Southgate Headland toward Newville right there. Uh, not along 431, but the road to the west of that. Andrew, remind me what that is. Uh, 173. One, okay, 173 and there in this, Henry County. This storm is moving at 45, so it's 45. the fastest storm of the day. So, so far. a little bit faster. A lot of the storms have been significantly slower, around 25 to 30 miles per hour. But this one's moving due east at 45 miles per hour. Um, Andrew, if you could turn your mic off and call Baron and ask them to fix our hand tracker, that would be really good. Um, and just step out of the room for me, will you? Um, tell them on links, they can use links too, all right? Um, so between Newville and Headland, that's going to be where this storm, this new tornado warned storm is. So we have two out there right now, and both of them for Henry and into Early County, both extend that far. So now I believe it's no longer including Dale County because it's crossed over into Kirkland's Crossroads area and Blackwood. Um, so let's zoom back in to, we're gonna, we're gonna go over to the east and head to this storm. Um, right along the state line. Stop right there. Go ahead and uh, and go up to velocity. And there you go. So there's our red, there's our green touching together here. And do storm relative, see if that gives us a little bit of a better look. Okay, so again, here's your green. That's wrapping toward the radar, which is to the west of our area right now. So moving toward the radar. Here's a loss of values, but that's indicating that it is with storm motion moving toward the east. So. Um, this is going to be the spot of rotation. Let's zoom on directly down into that. And, uh, and it's to the southwest or southeast of Barnes, south of Hayes right now, and east of Miller. So this thing has moved due east, as we expected from Miller, stayed south of Barnes. Uh, and it's going to be moving toward that ever so difficult city to say, uh, Urquhart. I'm going to mess that one up. Blake, if you could give me a pronunciation on that, that would be great somehow. Um, but yeah, this is, this is moving south of that very difficult city to name there in Early County. So we're going to stay on that one uh, after we take another look at our storm uh, over in uh, Henry County now, or further west in Henry County, I should say. And you can, see the, you can see the hook on that one. You can see the hook on this one as well. Between Newville and Headland, that's where we have our tornado warned storm that's going to be passing from Kirkland Crossroads area as well as Blackwood. And it's going to keep moving toward 431 and 173 here. Um, and again, when you're this close to the radar, it can be difficult to see where that rotation is. But they did put that warning on there, I think, primarily for the structure of the storm. Let's go to Montgomery's velocity. Um, there you go. So higher in the atmosphere, easier to see that velocity. When you're further away, there's not as many things obstructing it. So here you go. You've got your velocity couplet north of headland, and it looks like it's tightening up higher in the atmosphere. We can't see it at the surface right now, but higher in the atmosphere. Um, and, uh, and it's between Newville and Headland. Let's go to Panama oh, City's. Hello, hello. Um, Panama City's. Yeah, you're up, Andrew. Okay, yeah. Uh, hand tracker should be good now. Okay, hand tracker should be good. That's good. That's good. So we're going to go to Lynx uh, 1 upstairs. Lynx 1. And uh, let's, okay. let's go to Lynx 1. You're on Lynx 2 right now. Let's go to Lynx 1 upstairs. And um, Art, if you could pull that up for me. All right, thank you. So now we've got our Lynx 1 pulled up, and we have got, let's see, hopefully hand tracker has been fixed. Yes, it has. All right, so 
Um, there we go. So we're going to zoom in to this storm, Headland, Newville. Yeah. This is where it's going uh -huh. to be crossing over. You said 173 and 431, right, Andrew? Yes. Okay, so between those two, let's see if there are any additional smaller communities. I can't remember when I'm driving along that roadway what communities are in there, but Broad Street, Henry County Ro State Road 5, or Henry County Road 5 from Newville on down toward Broad Street. That's where this storm is going to be crossing over. Again, it's tornado warned, no confirmation on it. This is a radar indicated tornado warned storm moving 45 miles per hour. So the fastest one of the day, we're gonna check out. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have our um, EOX here. So Andrew, if you could ask them to, uh, actually, you know what? I may be able to do that, but go ahead and we're gonna put EOX and I'm gonna get that pulled up on this computer. Um, and I think that is EOX. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, but I'm not able to get the uh, the radar scans, or excuse me, the reflectivity, base velocity. That's what I'm looking for. Not seeing it right now. Not seeing any intense rotation come in right now at this time. Um, yeah, and it's a case again where it's so close, or it's not incredibly close to the yeah. radar site. But I mean, it's it's probably still descended below the radar beam, but. Definitely, at the very least, a mid-level rotation with this storm. And yeah. Andrew, if you'll step back up there on the green screen and, uh, and do your thing, you're good. We'll leave this here. Okay. Um, so you do your thing up there for a few minutes and talk about this storm, and then we're okay. going to go back to the one that's moving toward Early County. All righty. So um, I actually want to take it back to a more mid-level view of the storm because okay. I think that's where it really... Let's do that on links two. Yeah. Um, so you can definitely see the hook right there. Again, another supercell thunderstorm with that classic structure coming into Headland right now. And again, this is radar indicated at this point in time, but it would not surprise me if this thing is getting really close to producing a tornado. It's got the, the perfect structure basically to produce one. So if you're in Headland, Newville, we're calling you out again. If you're along 431, I cannot stress this enough. You need to go ahead and get off the roadway and get into a site built structure away from windows and doors. We've also got, I believe this is 134 here also that takes you from Headland to Columbia. You need to be, um, you need to be uh, taking cover on that road as well. Granberry Crossroads, you need to get to your safe place right now. Uh, Alabama State Route 95, Haleburg, I would say, you need to get in your safe place as well as this tornado, or radar indicated tornado uh, warning continues to move off to the east and is right now just a radar indicated rotation. There's no confirmation of this on the ground here just yet, but given the structure of this storm, it wouldn't surprise me if this thing is getting close to producing a tornado. This is almost a perfect supercellular structure uh, that's moving through the northern side of downtown Headland right now and is going to be uh, riding along or just north of State Highway 134 as we go through the next um, little bit. Let's actually put a track on this storm. Let's see if we can pick up on some communities. And this is moving um, at 45 miles per hour to the east. So this thing is moving in a good clip. This isn't like the last few storms where, where, where we were saying, oh, you have a little bit of time to uh, get to your safe place. This is moving quick enough to where I'd say if you're anywhere in eastern Henry County, you need to get into your safe place right now. So. Again, State Route 134 east of 431, and then you have Highway 95, Granberry Crossroads, the Balcom community, uh, Haleburg, um, the Freeman community in Early County. You need to be in your safe place. Um, I believe that was Rock Mill down here. You need to be in your safe place as well uh, from this potentially tornadic storm that continues to push off to the east at 45 miles per hour. So um, the tornadic part of the storm is not quite to these areas yet. I know I'm calling you guys out. I'm just giving you some lead time to get to your safe place. Smallest room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows and doors. If you're in Granberry Crossroads, if you're in Balcom, if you're in Haleburg, Freeman, Rock Hill, and Eastern Early, or Eastern Henry County, excuse me, and Northwestern Early County, you need to get to your safe place right now. Let's go ahead and take the track off of this. Um, and let's go back to our, is our other tornado warning, it's on the state line now, I believe? Um, it's currently on the state line, they extend it. This one right here? Georgia, in place. Uh, this one right here. Yeah, so they, they've extended it for Early County, the northern one. Um, so go ahead and stick your hand out there south of Fort Gaines, Andrew. Oh, right here, yeah. Yeah, there you yeah. go. That's our tornado warning storm for Early County that's right along or the northern side. Uh, yeah. moving toward Farrell Crossroads and Urquhart yeah, as well. Yeah, it's Urk, I believe, uh, for our floor director, it's Urquhart, correct? 
Okay, yeah, yes, yeah. that's yeah. how we pronounce it for now. Yeah, Urquhart. So if you're in Urquhart, if you're along Georgia State Route 39 in Early County, you need to get to your safe place right now. Um, down the line too, Farrell Crossroads, U.S. Highway 27, Kolomoki. The Kolomoki Mounds are also out here as well. If you live near the Kolomoki Mounds State Park, you need to get to your safe place right now as well. And okay. um, I believe the, ro the rotation should be in this area here. You have that red and then you have that green. That's where our rotation is. Actually, it should be more back here. We could be a sense where the radar is a little delayed between the two products. All right, Andrew, let's switch off here. We're gonna go back to links one and we're gonna show where the areas of rotation are. Um, and it looks like we may have everything fixed up here. So this is our Dothan radar. And uh, again, we were having some problems with this the other day, but now it's fixed back up. This is going to be just to the south of Urquhart, and that's going to keep moving in an almost due east direction. I know that they've actually they've taken it and, and expanded that box a little bit further northward toward Edison, but I do think it's still moving more in a due easterly direction from Urquhart toward um, toward Farrell Crossroads, so almost due east, moving at 40 miles per hour toward Kolomoki and Bluffton. So somewhere within here is where this tornado worn storm is going to be moving toward. Um, let's zoom back out and we're going to go a little bit further off to the east here and, uh, and we're going to focus back in on our tornado worn storms over in Henry County. So that one has moved fully into Early County. Tornado worn storms in Henry County now to the east of Headland and Newville at this point, Andrew. Okay, I uh, just wanted to bring this up. We've got another visual of the Abbeville tornado okay. from Commissioner Bedwell in Henry County. We um, have a video that we can pull up upstairs. We're going to hold off on that for right now okay. just because we do have three tornado worn storms out there. Um, or at, at bare minimum, we've got two, one that's just included in the last one. So I think that they're leaving up, Andrew, if you could give me confirmation on this, why they're leaving up the one that goes, well, okay, because it's going to expire here in 40 seconds. So this tornado warning was for the storm that's now in Early County. They're allowing it to expire within the next 30 seconds. So we have two tornado warned storms out there, one that's to the east of Headland and one that's moving toward the Edison, Bluffton, Kolomoki uh, region over in Early County there. So. On two tornado one storms, one severe thunderstorm warning for this storm that's moving through Abbeville. They've cut back the southern and western side of this thing. We'll go to our Dothan radar and, uh, and pull up the reflectivity here. Yes, there's definitely some very heavy rain within this thing. Haven't necessarily seen any exceptionally gusty winds with this one, but there could be some winds gusting in this area to the east of Abbeville, somewhere between 50 and 60 miles per hour potentially. Let's uh, put a small dropper on there and see what we got. Okay, so about 40 miles per hour is what that's saying at this point. So I do think it's a significantly weaker storm. Um, I, I think it was the southern side of it that that was warned for the tornado possible tag, then that portion of the storm moved due east and now has its own tornado warning to the south. We're gonna check the one hour hail component and there may be some hail. Uh, actually, I think that's from the storm prior. The one that sticks out the most is actually the one that's north of Blakely here in Early County near the Urquhart area. That is where we have potentially some large hail, upwards of an inch, I would say, in size um, in the northern portion of Early County. And Andrew, if you could check that tornado warning and tell me what the specification is on the hail there. Is, um, this is the northern one, correct? Yes. Um, let me see, hold on just one second. Um, that is 1.75 inch okay. hail. So 1.75 inch hail potentially within this storm. And we mentioned yesterday that there was a possibility of two plus inch hail. This one is golf ball sized at so 1.75 is what you said? Yes. 1.75 inch hail, golf ball sized hail potentially within this storm right along the Clay and Early County line here. Um, and oh, moving through the Urquhart area, moving through Kolomoki or just north of it, Bluffton as well going to be pounded by this storm. Um, hail is going to be the main threat besides, of course, the tornado worn portion of it. And we don't have any confirmation of a tornado within this storm. The one with Abbeville earlier today, we had confirmation on the ground that there was uh, that there was debris being lofted, that they could see the tornado. We had that video sent in um, by a viewer earlier that of the rotation within that storm. It's absolutely crazy rotation within it. We don't see any sort of uh, debris being lofted here in northern Early County, and we don't necessarily see it over in Henry County either. But what about east of Newville, right there? Yeah, that, I, I maybe. see what you're talking about. We're gonna. I do think that our velocity is more so displaced from where yeah. it looked like there may have been a loss of values there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it doesn't doesn't look like we're getting any sort of. Um, bats. Let's let's zoom back into it. 
and it just doesn't it, nothing, it doesn't seem like everything's quite lining up with this storm right now on radar presentation but it's moving between Balcom, Granbury Crossroads, Tumbleton. Those are the spots where this potential tornado, again it's a tornado worn storm, we don't have confirmation of it on the ground, but a tornado worn storm moving at 45 miles per hour near Granbury Crossroads and, uh, and Andrew, if you could remind me that road that comes due west out of Headland through Granbury Crossroads. 134. 134, all right. Alabama so 134. 134 there in Henry County, Granbury Crossroads is where we have this potential tornado. Um, here's your inflow and here's the storm we're trying to wrap around it. Sometimes, sometimes storms don't have that perfect presentation and they can still drop a tornado and that may be happening here at this point. So we don't have perfect presentation. It does look supercellular in nature. Um, but it's, uh, it's a little bit blown out here on the, uh, on the uh, northern end of this storm. And then the southern end doesn't quite look like it wraps all the way back in, uh, according to at least our reflectivity. You know, we'll go to Montgomery and we'll check out the velocity higher up. See, it looks like it's displaced from the reflectivity. The radar scans, or the uh, velocity scans, look displaced from where the reflectivity scans are showing us that, um, that hook on the western side of the storm. Let's look at the shear values. That's a little bit closer to where the hook was, and, uh, and I'll show you that here on radar. So a little bit closer to it, but somewhere within here. Somewhere within here, again, there's not always rain present where a tornado is, so it's not going to show that perfectly every single time, but it's trying to find that condensation funnel that makes its way to the ground. And I have seen tornadoes form where there is no condensation funnel, meaning that there is no cloud reaching down toward the ground, and there's just debris being lofted in the air. That could be the case with a situation like this type of storm right now. So um, still going to stay with it, with the coverage, although it doesn't look like all the parameters line up with each other. Still going to stay covering both of these tornado worn storms. The one further to the east, that includes Edison outside of our viewing area. This one goes until 1.15, well, central time. So technically, uh, that would be 2.15 for those in eastern time. It's a 40 mile per hour storm moving at 40 miles per hour, that is. Then the storm further to the south and west, closer to Headland and Newville. And just to make it clear, Headland and Newville are no longer in a threat of a tornado with this specific storm. But this one has, is moving at 45 miles per hour, and it's going to stay in southern Henry County. There's our newest scan. Here is our hook. Here is our inflow. So it's still got the shape, but this is a little bit oddly shaped storm here. Um, let's zoom back in. Actually, we're going to go to this one because it, too, with that latest scan, has tightened up. So Farrell Crossroads, right in the northern portion of our viewing area, Farrell Crossroads toward Bluffton. You guys want to be in your safe place. I know Bluffton is just one county north. You're probably getting some large hail at this point. Farrell Crossroads has the possibility of having a tornado move through it. And that's just how much of a difference between two cities that can be made here with a storm like this. Andrew, you got something on your mind? Yeah, I was going to say, go to CC. I think we might have okay. a tornado down here. That's it. And that's for Early County, right? Yeah, right there. Okay, I could see that. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. So this is the spot, and we'll circle it here, see if everything lines up. This is a spot oh, around Farrell Crossroads or just to the southwest of you all where we've got a drop in CC, correlation coefficient, trying to find the things in the atmosphere if they all are the same size when that radar beam shoots at them and is returned to the radar. Right now it's saying that in this area there may be things in the air that aren't just rain. If it's all oh, rain no, it's going to look it. maroon, yeah, but if it's other objects then it's going to potentially turn into this kind of greenish color. So we're going to check out our radar scan. That's where the hook the end of the hook is, lines up perfectly with that correlation coefficient loss there or debris being detected. Let's check our shear. We've got shear within the area as well. We've got three factors now. Let's see the fourth one. Let's check out our velocity. And, uh, and it doesn't line up perfectly, but that may be because a new scan just came in. So I do think that there's the possibility of a tornado on the ground. There you go. If we use storm relative, storm relative shows a loss of values that are moving away from the radar. These greens are moving back toward it. So southwest of Farrell Crossroads, there very well may be a tornado on the ground right now. So to the east of Urquhart and southwest of Farrell Crossroads. If you're in Farrell Crossroads, Bluffton, Kolomoki, you got to get into your safe place right now because I do believe that there's a possible tornado on the ground, not just saying that they, there may be some rotation here. I do think that there is uh, clear evidence that there could be a tornado that has touched down at one point, Andrew. So I asked the National Weather Service chat to see their thoughts on this as well. Okay, thank you, appreciate that. Uh, give me any updated information that you have here with that latest scan of the, um, of the storm relative velocity here. And again, this is south of Farrell Crossroads, moved across Jenkins Road, Sawyer Road. It's moving right along Sawyer Road, 
into Kolomoki here. I know that Sawyer Road may not continue all the way to Kolomoki, but um, yeah, if you're in Farrell Crossroads or Kolomoki, you have got to get into your safe place because this is the tornado warned storm. This is the portion of it that has the uh, highest return of values here of possible rotation, shear, debris as well. South of Farrell Crossroads, this is our debris signature loss. So we'll zoom back in a little bit further and see if we can get some other names. It looks like Indian Mounds Road is where this thing is over at this point. South of Farrell Crossroads, Farrell Crossroads folks, I keep saying your name for a reason. I think that you really need to be in your safe place in that innermost room. Hop into that bathtub if you can. Um, you know, use a pillow to protect your head. If you've got a baseball helmet, make sure that the kids are wearing that. Protect the kids first because this could be a tornado that's on the ground moving into your community right now. Andrew. Um, I was going to say this is, yeah, this is right over the Kolomoki Mountain State Park. Okay, Kolomoki Mountain State Park. Yeah. So um, anyone, again, you, you recognize Highway 27, right, near Schoolhouse Road. So those that are in Kolomoki Church Road here, you guys have got to be in your safe place. We're going to zoom down a little bit further just for those folks that really, uh, I'm not getting any additional road names here besides Indian Mounds Road, but um, anyone that's north of Farrell Crossroads, you'll want to be in your safe place as well. Up toward Bluffton, up toward Shepherd Street, you guys want to be in your safe place because this thing is moving a little bit more easterly than northeast, but it could be moving up in that direction here with the latest scans that we've had come in. This is our debris signature that we have here. Let's check out our reflectivity, and there you go. There's that hook that's moving. So you've got your inflow here and your rain that's being wrapped around the back side of it. So this is where the tornado most likely would be. Andrew? So uh, National Weather Service is saying they're not certain that this is okay. down because it doesn't match exactly where the velocity slash rotation is. But I mean, it's, it's very, very close. Yeah, it's, it's got to be, be very close. I wouldn't, yeah. again, it may not even be on the ground for a long time. All it has to do is touch down once and loft some debris, and we're going to get that scene back on radar most of the time. So, but I think that it is close enough to where it may not be co-located right now, but I do think that there is a possibility at one point within a sparsely populated area, it touched down, may have, or maybe not even reached all the way to the ground, just the tops of trees. That's all it needs to do is grab a few things from the ground and loft them back up in the air. Let's zoom back out, and, um, and we're going to go to our western storm. Uh, looks like they have a confirmed tornado still up there east of Eufaula. Um, but here is our western storm. And yeah, I, see, I know you see a lot of bright values down there. That's not the portion that we're looking at. We're actually looking right up in here. And we're going to use our reflectivity to see here's the hook. There's the inflow notch. This is a pretty lopsided storm. I believe this thing's probably producing some large hail at this point. Andrew, you got anything additional? Um, so the National Weather Service was talking about a surge in outbound winds with this storm, okay. and that leads that could lead to a spin up, an increased spin up eventually. Okay. So uh, two things here: increase in outbound winds is what the National Weather Service is saying. There's also the potential for a tornado in this storm and very large hail. We talked yesterday how golf ball sized hail is going to be possible today. And Andrew, what was the uh, the hail size that they put on this storm? Because we're getting very high values back of possibility of hail within this storm north of Columbia there along 95. So um, they only went with an inch in diameter. With an inch? Okay, I, I wouldn't be surprised. And you can check on radar scope for me. Tell me yeah. the values there if those gray values are popping up on uh, on our radar app. And, uh, and let me know. But again, there could be very large hail inside of this storm right now getting ready. It's on the western side of 95, but crossing over. So not only is there the threat of a tornado, but exceptionally large hail as well could be possible within this storm. Um, here is where the rotation is. You see your reds and your greens grouped together, but not touching each other. Um, this one's kind of a lopsided storm. So, um, but here you go. There's the wrapping in. Uh, of the of the hook of this storm, so lopsided, but undoubtedly still has supercellular shape to it. Zoom out a little bit further. Check the rest of our area. For those that are in Coffee County, Dale County, Geneva County, you are in the all clear right now, and may stay that way for much of the rest of the day until we get that second round later on tonight. Deeper into the night, we're going to have another round of storms that moves in and could cause some problems for us, and that's damaging winds, hail, and tornadoes potentially all over again. Um, but we're going to zoom back into our three worn storms here. We've got the one in Abbeville right now that's significantly weaker than all the rest. It doesn't look like there's any significant hail signatures coming back from that one. Uh, this is actually, I believe, old signatures. And I'll put that into motion. Yeah, those are old hail swath signatures. So it doesn't look to be the big problem. But the big problem is going to be our 
two uh, tornado worn storms, one for Early County, one for Henry into Early County. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, Dale, Coffee, Houston, Geneva counties, no, no warnings for your area, no storms in your area, a little bit of rain, but no storms in your area that could go severe warn at this time. So let's focus back in on these ones. Hail, a possibility with both of the storms, the one moving toward Bluffton, Farrell Crossroads, Colomoke. We've got some large hail possible there. Even better chance, I think, for large hail. You can see these dark values. That is a 50% chance or greater likelihood of, of hail, large hail being reported within these storms north of Columbia along State Road 95. So and that is, uh, that is going to be the main threat with this is hail and a tornado. Some outbound winds, like Andrew was saying, could be very gusty, but I think it's the tornado and the hail with this storm instead of straight line winds. And then the tornado uh, is going to be the main threat here in this northern storm, and, uh, or potential tornado is going to be the main threat within this northern storm. So you see these bright greens and then a loss of values here. This is going to be the area of rotation passing over State Road uh, 27 there in Georgia right now. And then we've got north of Columbia, we've got an area of rotation. It's not as well defined, um, but an area of rotation as well. And, um, and we're going to zoom in on that. That is between Crossberry, or Granberry Crossroads, excuse me, and Haleburg. Um, and let's see if we can get... So Haleburg, folks, you need to be in your safe place right now. Anyone that's along County Road 53, Jones Roads, H Haleburg, Hayden Street, Davis Street, Stovall Street. I know I'm reading off some things that you can are able to read yourself here, but for those that just may be listening for some reason, instead of watching, I really do want anyone that's south of Browns Crossroads and into Haleburg, and then south of Haleburg around North Main Street there, or, well, 95. I do want you guys to be in your safe place for this potential tornadic storm. It's tornado warned for the next uh, 15 minutes, excuse me, for the next 15 minutes but it's moving at 45 miles per hour directly into Haleburg as we speak, and probably within the next scan, it's going to be right over Haleburg or just to the eastern side of it. So, um, yeah, Balkan folks, Granberry Crossroads, you guys are in the clear of the tornadic portion of this storm for sure, and I think that your severe weather threat is done for quite some time. Um, but Haleburg is the one that's going to be getting the worst of it here in just a little bit. Um, here is your hook, so anyone that's to the west of the hook, you guys are in the clear. It's not moving back in that direction. Anyone that's near Freeman, between Haleburg and Freeman, this could be exceptionally large hail in here, upwards of golf ball sized, I believe. I know what National Weather Service hasn't said that at this point, but that's what we have potential for today. We have potential for golf ball sized hail. Already had National Weather Service put a warning on at least one storm over in Early County for that. Uh, but the Freeman folks, I think that you've got the hail threat right now, you've got the tornado threat coming your way in just a little bit, um, but it may be able to stay just north of you. So I can't say this enough. We haven't gotten that latest scan in just yet, but it's probably going to be right over Haleburg along, uh, along 95 uh, where we have that potential tornado moving toward uh, your region. So I need you to be in your safe place. Anyone that's to the east of Haleburg, you have got to get in your safe place. This is right on the uh, the edge of our state getting ready to move into Early County and it's going to be moving toward Blakely. Blakely's not in a warning right now, but you need to know where your safe place is. Um, so awesome. So again, we uh, we've got two tornado warned storms. Both of them have pretty decent rotation within them. Um, but it looks like the one to the west, its rotation is a little bit offset and, and, and it's, a little, it's a little bit of a wonky storm. It doesn't have that typical structure that we're looking for. The one that's to the north definitely has the structure and it's got that well-defined hook to now cross over uh, not, or 27 there coming out of the northern side of Blakely. And uh, Kolomoki, we called your name out numerous times. This is now in your area um, right along 27. So, Let's go back to our storm relative velocity, and it is directly over Kolomoki, just as we were describing earlier on, that it would be crossing uh, 27 within just a few minutes. It has done so. Rock Mine Road, Croft Ro or Bancroft Road, uh, County Road 120, all of these places. Everybody that's listening to me, I know that the winds are picking up and that things may be getting, uh, getting a little bit squirrely out there. You got to make sure that you're in that innermost room, that safe place. Parksville, you got just a minute here. Next scan, it's going to bring this thing closer to you. So you have got to be into your safe place. Terman as well. I know that we may be getting out of Early County here in just a little bit with some of these communities that we're naming off. Actually, yeah, it is. It is outside of the community. But anyone that's south of Edison, 
uh, you guys have got to be in your safe place. I know that that's not necessarily the area that we call out these things for typically, but south of Edison, that's where we have a tornado warned storm that may have had a tornado on the ground just a few minutes ago and it's moving in your direction. We're going to move back down south uh, toward our storm that's getting ready to cross 95 here. Road 95 north, north of Columbia, just right at or south of Haleburg most likely is where we have the tornado warned storm that has plenty of rotation within it. Uh, it's a little bit weaker than what we have seen before with storms around here, but there's no doubt that there is some rotation there. Um, and uh, we'll use our velocity instead of just storm relative. And you can see that red and that green uh, near each other, but it doesn't, uh, it's not as well defined as what we did have earlier. Here is your, what's attempting to look like a hook. We did have a storm that had a very well defined hook earlier today and some rotation in Dale County. Eventually, it's actually this one that's up here right now. Um, it looked like it was dying down, which looks like what this storm is doing. It looks like it's uh, falling apart. And then it revamped and it recycled. And Andrew hit that on the head. Same thing may be trying to happen with this one here. Sometimes storms recycle, especially if they run into more favorable environments that haven't had as much rain. And on the southern side of these storms, there hasn't been nearly as much rain to, uh, to eat up that energy. Storms haven't rolled through this area, so the atmosphere hasn't been worked over yet. Because this one's so close to this one up here, I don't doubt that it's running into some um, to an atmosphere that has been worked over a little bit. So maybe that's part of the reason that it is looks to be weakening some with that latest scan that just came in. Um, and Andrew, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know, is this a displaced portion of the storm here, the continuation of the hook? It kind of looks like that. Okay, your, yeah. your mic may have died or it may not be on, I'm not certain. Um, it does look like it. Okay, yeah, may, maybe a displaced portion of the storm. And some, we have seen that before on radar presentation where you actually, this is actually where the tornadic rotation is. Um, let's see here. Yeah, looks like that may be the case. So it may have displaced itself from the overall storm. Um, and, uh, and, and that's where we have more of the rotation put together, especially when we're looking at storm relative and where we have our shear values as well. Um, if we put a debris tracker on here, uh, I'm not quite seeing everything line up. But we'll go back to radar presentation. So within here, from Haleburg down south, not quite to Columbia, but south toward Columbia, along, along 95 is where we have this tornado warned storm. If you're anyone in here, you've got to already have been in your safe place. If you're in Freeman, you got to get to your safe place now. I do think that the worst, the tornado threat is going to stay north of Rock Hill and Luke most likely, but Freeman is right in the line of this thing. You got about one minute, two minutes to make sure that you're in your safe place. This thing's moving at 45 miles per hour, so it's going to be there very soon. Freeman folks, get into your safe place with this with this storm that's crossing from Alabama into Georgia. County Road 112, um, those that are along River Road as well, and Mosley Town Road, you guys have to be in your safe place because I know you're right around the Freeman area. This storm is moving into your, uh, into your vicinity here within just the next couple of minutes. In fact, we get the next scan here in probably two minutes, I believe, and, or maybe less, and when we get that next scan in, I don't doubt that it's gonna be crossing over the river and into Early County. So and that's where we have, I think, the highest threat for a tornado at this point is, uh, is in the Freeman vicinity. Let's go back northeast instead of west of Blakely. Now we're going northeast of it, and we still have this tornado worn storm. Uh, I know that it's going to be moving out of Early County here soon. So for those that are over in Edison or points to the south of Edison, you need to tune into the stations over in Albany and continue watching from them um, if you've been watching our, our station at this point. So this, this storm is tornado worn. Looked like it probably had some large hail associated with it as well. And it's now to the east of 27, still well north there of 162. So we're going to keep watching this one while it's still in the northern the northeastern portion of Early County. It's only got another couple minutes. There's that latest scan, and it looks like we've got our hook continuing right along that Early County line there on the west or eastern edge of it. And let's go to our debris tracker. Uh, not seeing any debris values lost here. Um, so it may have, may have put down a tornado for just a brief second earlier, but no confirmation on that from any EMS folks over in that direction. No EMA directors have reported that over in Early County. Um, Abbeville, it was much easier to get that report because it hit right in Abbeville and, uh, and we were able, you know what, let's bring that up. Let's, if, uh, Art, when you get that um, video from Abbeville, let's bring it up that you were talking about earlier and, uh, and we'll talk about it. 
um, and just put it, tell me my ear, there you go. Yeah, there's the storm. It's very, obviously, it was a very large storm. We've got some damage to some structures there. Let's put it on the green screen, and I'll step in front of it here. Um, but there you go. So here we've got clear damage to buildings, and is that along 431? Uh, if you could, if you could find out where, I don't know if Rob got this or, okay, this is Bradley Bedwell sending this in to us on Facebook. There's the storm. Very easy to see a very dark lowering in that region. Uh, and then this is the damage that came out of that storm. So, um, again, EMS reported a tornado on the ground. We've got confirmation of damage in that area. And this is pretty big damage. Um, this, is, this doesn't seem to be any sort of weak tornado. Uh, what was that? Singletary Road is where we had that damage reported at. Here's some more damage. Some shingles uh, ripped off and part of the, the patio or the, the roofing of the overhang ripped off as well. Obviously that barn destroyed, very large tree taken down. So quite a bit of damage from the Abbeville area. And we wanted to show you guys these pictures because this is the only confirmed tornado that we've had today. EMS gave that confirmation to the National Weather Service. That's why they were able to get that warning out there. But some of these things can be hard to see, especially when they're with such small cells like what we had to start off today. Now the cells are much larger. So quite a bit of damage up in the Abbeville region along Singletary Road. Let's go back to our radar on Lynx 1. And uh, Andrew, what you got for me? I was going to mention Singletary Road. That's south of Abbeville High School. Okay, south That's of Abbeville High School. Do we know if there was any uh, damage around the high school area? Have we gotten any? Uh, yeah, find that out for me, Blake. Um, so, and of course, there are going to be people doing work up in that direction. Make sure that you guys uh, stay out of the workers' way. Do not drive around. Don't go sightseeing up there in Abbeville. There's no need for that. We've already got a reporter up there that's going to get that confirmation of, of who, what roads are closed, what areas being worked on, that sort of thing. We'll relay that to you. No need for you to go out there yourself. We'll take care of that part and get you that information so that way you're not clogging up those regions. Um, so to, well to the east of Kolomoki and now moving across state lines from Early County to toward, uh, I can't remember what road comes out of Edison here, but that's where we've got um, a tornado warned storm that does look like and it's right on the border of what we would be covering here at WDHN. But here's your green going toward radar. Here's your loss of values. So this is where the potential tornado would be. Um, and let's check our shear values as well and definitely have some increase weak to medium shear here uh, in the atmosphere around that portion of the storm. Andrew? So that road that goes from Arlington to Edison, that is Georgia State Route 216. Okay, 216, thank you, I appreciate yes. it. Um, we've got another storm that's well to the west of uh, Blakely, but it's just crossed over into Early County. And you may remember that we talked about a part of the storm that was displaced from the rest of it. And if I put it into motion here, you'll see what I'm talking about. This little bit right here, that, that portion was uh, displaced from the rest of the storm, but it was still part of it. And I believe that it has actually, if there were, and this happens sometimes, sometimes you get what was a tornado on the northern portion of the storm, which would have been up here, that small appendage, will move a little bit further away from that original location. That may be happening here. There may be more rotation on the southern side of this uh, western side of the storm. So let's, uh, let's review that. And Andrew, if you can get any updates from the National Weather Service for me on where they think the most likely rotation is within this storm. Um, the one that is moving toward Blakely right now. If you're in Blakely, not saying that you have to be in your safe place right now, but I think it's a great idea to know exactly where your safe place is. And just to reiterate, um, Edison, south of you all, red and green touching right here. That's where we've got our rotation. Um, and, and that storm is now out of our viewing area, but I do believe that there's the possibility of, uh, there's definitely rotation within that storm, but I do believe that there's a possibility it did put down maybe a tornado at near the Farrell Crossroads area or just to the west of them and maybe trying to do the same thing south of Edison again. So we don't have confirmation that it happened, but it looked like there may have been a loss in our correlation coefficient indicating that debris may have been in the air for a short time period. North of Columbia and closer to Blakely, that's where we've got our area of rotation now associated with this tornado warned storm that goes out for the next three and a half minutes. Um, but it doesn't it's not as well defined as when they first put the tornado warning on this thing, but this is the appendage that I'm watching that would be most likely to have a potential tornado within it. So let's zoom in down to some of these uh, roads here on the 
eastern side of this tornado warning. Rock Hill Road, Union Road, those that are in river or along River Road, you guys have got to be in your safe place. This is going to be passing just to the north of Luke or in the Luke area. You may remember that I said that I think it'll be Freeman and points further east and north of them. Well, that was when it was originally the appendage to the north. Now we've got the second appendage to the south here, so there could be rotation within both of these parts of the storm. And sometimes it'll drop one in one area, lift up and drop one in another area, a little bit further away from the original location in the original track. So this is what we've got going on in now early western early county. Those that are in uh, Henry County, give it one more scan and they're probably going to take away the, uh, the tornado warning for you. And if they don't, I'm going to give you that confirmation anyway that you are safe in Henry County, in the eastern portion of Henry County from this, uh, this particular storm. And I do want you to see the one south of Edison has wrapped up significantly. So um, again, that, what was that, State Road, Georgia? Um, so now it looks like it's going to be paralleling 62. That's yeah. heading right towards Albany. Yeah, so it's going to yeah. be moving toward Albany. Folks yeah. that are over, it, it, still pretty far away, but this one is definitely the strongest of the two. And that's and, uh, Calhoun County, yeah. Georgia, and that'll be heading towards Doherty County next. So uh, anyone that's watching in that direction or knows someone over in that direction, this is a time, you know, Andrew mentioned this they earlier, if you know someone over, over in a certain direction, give them a phone call. Edison, south of Edison there in Calhoun County, moving toward Doherty County and Morgan, you guys want to put, uh, tell your friends. Yes, Andrew. Yeah, I've just extended the yes, tornado warning from, for, yeah, I see county. for Blakely and Damascus. I do think it'll stay north of Damascus because it is moving more in an easterly direction, but we've been calling out Blakely saying, hey, know where your safe place is. We want you guys to be heading toward that safe place now because there is this tornado warned storm and it looks like it's actually moving a little bit further south than, or the appendage is the southern appendage that may have the uh, the tornado warning uh, associated with it. So everybody in Henry County, you're now out of the threat for this uh, for this particular storm. Yeah. But it's those that are in Early County where you need to be getting into your safe place here. It's the northern half of Early County. If you're in the southern half, closer to Miller, you are good to go here. Anyone that's Columbia and points south, I know Columbia is over, uh, not in Early County, but it's on the other side of the river. But anybody that like, if you were to draw a line, which I'll do for you here. From, early, from Columbia to the east. Anyone that's in the southern half of Early County, you have no severe weather threat for you right now, none whatsoever. Let's go back to where the threat is. And we're gonna zoom in on it. It's to the west of Blakely. We're gonna get some smaller roads, some smaller names in here. Um, so you guys, Rock Hill Road, I mentioned that one earlier, Union mm -hmm. Road and Luke. Anyone that's north of Luke there from Georgia Highway 62, north of Georgia Highway 62, you've got to be in your safe place. And here you go with that latest scan that just came in. It did exactly what I was talking about. This was the original northern appendage. It created one on the southern side. So this will be the spot for potential rotation. Um, let's go to our shear values. And our shear values are located within that southern appendage as well. So it does look like the um, the rotation has shifted within the storm. That happens sometimes, especially with a supercellular storm like this. We'll go to storm relative velocity. Not getting significant values out of this thing, um, but if we go to maybe regular velocity, yeah, here's our red and our green uh, touching up there to the west of Blakely. So anyone, and they've just expired that last, or allowed it to expire here at one o'clock. So, our new tornado warning, it's going to go out for a while until 2.45 p.m. Eastern Time. 2.45 p.m. Eastern Time for Early County. That includes Blakely. All of Blakely is within this tornado warning storm, and you've got to get to your safe place because while we don't have confirmation of a tornado on the ground, we've had rotation within this thing for quite some time. Um, so, Andrew, if you, uh, if you get any updates from... Um, from Houston, or excuse me, from Early County EMA or from the National Weather Service, and give those to me because again, I haven't seen any loss in debris si or any debris signatures come up here at this point, mm -hmm. uh, and you haven't. I know Jordan hasn't at this point. If we did, we would definitely be bringing that to your attention. Just doesn't look like it, but it does have that supercellular structure. Um, and for everyone that was in northern Early County that was underneath the original tornado warning for the storm that's now moving south of Edison. Um, you guys are good to go. Uh, no longer, no longer have a tornado warning for Bluffton, for anybody that's up in the Kolomoki region. Actually, this this one may barely be touching that region up there for Kolomoki folks, but I, I don't, I don't believe that it is. Um, so, the two communities, the two that I've been calling out, Luke and Blakely. Anyone between there along Georgia Highway 62, 
we need you guys to be getting to your safe place because that's where this storm is crossing from Luke to Blakely uh, Union Road. This should be over you all right now. Let's zoom back into some of these smaller communities here on the western side of Blakely. Uh, Chansey Mill Road, Union Road, it's just now passing your region. Cedar Springs Road, folks, you guys, Columbia Street there in the heart of Blakely, you guys have got to get into your safe place because there is the possibility of a tornado with this storm, Andrew. So we got in contact with the EMA in Early County. So far, no reports of damage as of five minutes ago because we've had one storm at least that's moved through the county. Yes, one this storm, storm that's storm already two. moved all the way through the northern portion of the county. Now we've got our second storm that's in the heart of the county. Uh, that's now to the east of the Freeman region and moving into Blakely. So anyone that, for real, anyone that's in the heart of Blakely, you guys have got to be getting into your safe place just in case this thing does drop a tornado. Not the strongest signature that we've seen on the day. I'll give you that. But I do want to just be honest and say that this appendage here is concerning. We'll get those latest scans here in a couple of minutes. Anywhere between Luke and Blakely, you got to get into your safe place because that's where the storm is, uh, is traversing. So. Let's see if, uh, I don't think that that's going to work for us here, but um, I'm going to draw anyone that's, again, south of Rock Hill, Luke, anyone that's south of that line that I just drew, and, uh, and we'll zoom out here. You guys are going to be in the clear of this storm. It's north of this white line that I just drew that you guys are going to want to be in your safe place. So we'll take that back off here, and we'll zoom back into some of the roads. For anyone that may just be tuning in on the western side of Blakely, here is the appendage. That's the area that we're watching to, for rotation here. Uh, we'll put our storm relative velocity. You see a loss, actually we just got that latest scan, um, a loss of signature, so it's not a real it's not a real strong velocity scan that just came in. It's a little bit broader in rotation, but you got your green and your red. They're together in the same vicinity, but they're not touching. So the one that we had up in um, Abbeville, we had those velocities touching. We've had a couple of other storms where the velocities, the green and the red, were undoubtedly touching each other. And where they meet, that's where you've got high, uh, high rotation values coming in. Right now, we don't have significant rotation values coming back to us, but we do have the possibility there. Maybe if we go to Montgomery's radar and we check from there, it's red and green near each other, but nothing significant. Let's go to the velocity from, um, yeah, from Panama City, and you've got a loss of values on the north side of Blakely, and we've got additional values here on the southern side. Um, so that's, that's what we've, we've got coming in from Panama City right now. Um, and uh, Blake, if you can make sure that, that on-air light is on, that'd be great. Um, so Blakely, Blakely is where we have this storm, this tornado-worn storm moving over the city right now. We're just on the western side. If we use Dothan's radar, that'll, that'll give us the western side of Blakely seeing this appendage right now. And it's actually starting to, it, yeah, it's curving in more. So it's going to be moving toward or just south of Blakely. And, uh, and anyone that's along Cedar Springs Road, anyone that's along Lucille Road, Old Lucille Road, the northern side of it at least, anyone north of Grier Road, you guys have got to be in your safe place. The heart of Blakely itself, get into your safe place. Yes, it's going to be moving into or just south of the city. Um, and that appendage, there you go, there's your hook. That is exactly what we typically see with a supercellular storm that may produce a tornado. Let's go to, uh, and gentlemen, you can chime in if there's anything additional that you have for me. Um, I'm not seeing our red and green meet up here. There you go on storm relative velocity. We've got a little bit better of a value feedback. If I circle that, I'm going to do this real quick. If we circle this right here, this would be the area of potential rotation. So we've got red, we've got green, and what you're also going to see if we go to our reflectivity, you're going to see where that hook comes into play right there too. So this is going to be, again, in Blakely and just south of it is where the most likely spot of rotation is going to be within or the most likely spot for a tornado to be produced is, uh, is located right now. Andrew? Um, there was nothing else I wanted to comment on. Okay. Yeah, I do agree with, the, uh, with what you're saying. I okay. don't see any CC drop yet. It's co-located, but I'm going to be watching it closely. Okay. Sounds good. Let's check on that. Let's check on the CC drop. Um, yeah, we don't have anything that's well defined in there. Um, these, this is a loss of values. I don't know if that's just dust that's being brought in there, but it's not Typically, you're looking for a ball. You're looking for a ball of, um, or a circular area of a loss and correlation coefficient, meaning that debris is being lifted up. Um, so again, we're not quite seeing that right now. 
Let's go back to storm relative. Same thing, same scan as earlier. It's on the southwestern side of the city of Blakely, and it's going to be moving uh, almost due east here, and it has been maintaining uh, that over the past probably four or five scans. Andrew? Well, something I wanted to comment You're on. You're going to have to turn on your mic. Um, Something I wanted to comment on with this storm, if you go back to the reflectivity, okay. um, it is starting to get a little bit separated now from the storm to the north. And if you zoom all the way out, there's nothing to the south of this to inhibit yeah, it. That's right. All. There is nothing to the south. And, and because it's a little bit further than where this storm did move, I think that you're, what you're saying is that it's running into more, more untapped potential. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So uh, the atmosphere is, is, as Andrew had put it earlier, primed in this spot. We haven't had a strong storm move through Blakely yet, which is why this storm is continuing to strengthen here. The upper level atmospheric dynamics are working with this thing as well, and what's happening at the surface is working with it uh, also. So this is our main concern. We'll go, we'll take a wide view here just to show everybody. Yes, there are some more storms out there. Um, and you know, there may be some lightning with some of these storms, that sort of thing. But the obvious two strongest ones are in southwest Georgia right now. They are both tornado warned, or uh, I think that the one just northeast of our tornado warning in Early County may have just expired. Lots of lightning within this storm. It's a very strong storm. We do use lightning as an indicator um, of, of strength. This storm is now, here you go, again, south of Blakely, and it's moving right across uh, two, or 27 here as we speak, so uh, which we would call South Main Street. Two, 27, say so we're 27, South Main Street out of Blakely is where this thing is moving across right now. So anybody that is on the southeast side of Blakely, you got to be in your safe place because this is a very clear as day hook. Let me take this off. Very clear as day hook here with your inflow. So winds coming into the storm, winds wrapping around the back side of the storm and, and bringing that rain around it. This is going to be our mesocyclone. Yes, what you got for me, Jordan? Um, the National Weather Service just came out with a new mesoscale discussion. They okay. said these storms uh, will continue and expect two to three inch hail with some of these thunderstorms. Okay. And the threat will continue to increase throughout the day. All right, sounds good. So uh, over the next, I mean, we're gonna have plenty more storms throughout the day. Not all of them are gonna go severe warm, but plenty of them have the opportunity Opportunity to do so and the one that is warned right now is a tornado warning for Blakely just south of the city where we were calling it out earlier said that it was going to be met or the the center of Blakely or point south and that's exactly where the center of or excuse me where this hook is right now so uh, let's get back our toolbar up here we'll put it into motion and uh, and let me take that off for you here so here is the storm it's kind of it's it's taking a pretty much due easterly jog a due easterly jog from where it was in Freeman over toward and south of Blakely. And, uh, and this thing has undoubtedly strengthened, tightened up. There's no doubt in my mind that there is the possibility of a tornado within this thing. Sure, we've got a warning on it, but sometimes there, there are warnings on things, and then there are storms that just scream at you that say, I'm a supercellular storm that's capable of producing a tornado. This is one of those storms. It's, it's screaming at us right now. I've got the possibility of putting down a tornado at any point. So anyone that's south of Blakely, you have got to be uh, making sure that you're in your safe place to the west of Blakely now. You're getting ready to be in the clear. Give it another minute or two, you'll probably be in the clear of any tornado threat. Um, so Main Street coming out of the southern side of Blakely, 27 there, it's getting ready to cross over toward Georgia Highway 200. Anyone that's along Georgia Highway 200, south, south of Magnolia Street, you got to be in your safe place. Uh, uh, Prio Road, Waller Road, and, uh, and let's go even a little bit further off to the east. Anyone that's along County Road 23, you guys have got to make sure in Sandy Bottom Road, you guys have got to make sure that you are in your safe place because this thing is moving and it's going to ride right along Georgia Highway 200 or just on the southern side of it. You saw that latest scan come in. I mean, there, there's really no doubt that this thing has every bit of supercellular structure that you're looking for when you're looking at a tornadic storm. Uh, so anyone that's there's along and south okay. of Georgia Highway 200, you got to get into your safe place, especially anyone that's north of it. You need to be in your safe place as well. But I'm saying in particular, you're south of Georgia Highway 200, southeast of the city of Blakely. Please, I can't say it enough. Please get into your safe place, that innermost room. We'll bring it up here um, for those that, that don't know it. Innermost room, 
of your home, whether it's a mobile home or whatever, or, or uh, a manufactured home, whatever it might be, you got to get into that centermost room, hallway, bathroom, closet. Um, if you've got a bathtub in there, go ahead, get in there. If you've got a twin size mattress too, that's a good thing to put over the bathtub while you're covered in there. Of course, kids first. That's the most important thing is kids first. You want to make sure that they are in the safest spot um, within that innermost room and you want to put yourself over them too. Cover your head with pillows, blankets, or a helmet. That's going to help you out as well. Um, so we'll get, we'll get off of this here. We'll show you again. I just wanted to describe for those that don't know where the safest place in their home is, it's in the center of the home, away from those windows, away from those doors, away from the exterior walls. If you're not capable of doing that and you're further down the line along Georgia Highway 200, uh, closer to where it intersects with, and let me, let me re, Andrew, if you could find that for me, Georgia Highway 200, I can't quite see it because of the values that are coming in here, and Sandy Bottom Road or that intersection. Giles Hightower Road. Giles Hightower Road and Georgia Highway 200. You've got just enough time to potentially, if you're in a mobile home, go to a neighbor that has a more well-built home and knock on the door and, and, and ask them to let you in. You've got just enough time, only a couple of minutes here, or give them a call before you leave your, your structure at this point. This is going to stay to the south of Bancroft, and again, this is an extremely well-defined supercellular storm. You've got your inflow notch here with the winds driving up into the storm, winds driving around it. Anyone that's in Blakely now, this tornado threat is over for you. You're still underneath a tornado warning. But if you're in the heart of Blakely, that is not the eastern side, but the heart and the western side no longer have a tornado threat for you. And they actually did just chop back some of that warning. Uh, Andrew, what you got? All right. So they just updated this warning. It's still um, radar indicated. Yes. But like you said, perfect supercellular structure. But the thing I wanted to bring up, they upped the hail size to two inches in depth. Okay. So we mentioned this earlier with the storm that this was likely going to have very large hail with it. Uh, upwards, and I said I, I do think this one's probably going to be the one that produces golf ball sized hail. Um, and they put two inch hail indicator on this thing, so let's bring that up. Um, here you go. So now it's moved through Blakely. And if, if you're in Blakely and you have the ability to take some pictures of the hail, if you know of damage that happened to your home or near your area, go ahead and give us some pictures and video of that once it's safe to do so. I'll give you that all clear here. I just want to bring it to your attention that if you, you got pelted by hail, you've had those winds pick up and now they've died down for you, uh, go ahead, send those to us. Email news at WDHN.com. We'll put it on the air to show folks what's going on with this storm. This is the strongest one that we have had since the one that moved through Abbeville and, uh, and brought a tornado to them. So let's go back to our velocity. And you can see the red and the green touching here just south, exactly what I was saying earlier. Georgia Highway 200, Pryor Road, those that are along Sandy Bottom Road, it's moving towards you guys right now with that latest scan. It's got to be at the intersection of Georgia Highway 200 and Sandy Bottom Road, moving toward Giles Hightower Road and the intersection that it has with Georgia Highway 200 as well. This is the spot, I mean, it's moving due east, right along that road. Anybody that's driving along, and unfortunately they're in the path of a tornado right now, hopefully they're driving fast enough to get around that bend and get away from it. But um, County Road 23, Giles Hightower Road, Georgia Highway 200. Andrew, if you can mute your mic. Um, these areas right here are the spot where we have the potential for a tornado right now. Um, and uh, let, me, let me bring back up our debris see if we have any loss in debris values. I'm not seeing it at this point, at least nothing well defined, but it's not, it's, uh, I'm gonna be honest, it doesn't look like the, the best values, and we've got very high shear within this as well. So still a little bit um, uncertain about debris being lofted in the air right now, but there's no doubt that this thing has the perfect supercellular structure. If you were to be outside, which we don't want you to be, outside looking at this thing, you would see a massive rotation um, on the underside of this thing, a massive wall or rotating wall cloud, most likely. Anyone that is in the heart of Blakely and West, you guys are safe. Those that are in the eastern side of Blakely, you guys are getting ready to be safe here within the next couple of minutes or so. I do believe that the worst of it is over for you, uh, but give yourself another minute to stay in your safe place just in case. And again, those folks that live south of Blakely, near the Freeman area as well, if you hear sirens driving by or folks are trying to clean up roadways, don't get out and drive through this. That's the last thing that we need is, is to be on the roadways when people are trying to do some cleanup if there has been uh, anything that's happened. We haven't had any reports yet, but this is the most well-defined supercellular storm that we have had uh, here in the Wiregrass and the Tri-State region today. Not only is it a tornado threat, but it is a hail threat with hail 
uh, upwards of two inches in size. That's larger than a golf ball possible within this storm. And it's going to happen right in here where you see those, those purples uh, being reflected back here. And, uh, and sorry, we don't want debris. We want our, here you go, hail signatures. So this is where we've got the highest potential for some very large hail. Let's go back to our velocity. And it has tightened up significantly, significantly. This is a um, much, this is probably one of our tightest rotations of the day. And we've been calling this out along Georgia Highway 200 and Giles Hightower Road. We've been saying, get into your safe place. You've got just enough time to do so. Now it's on top of you. Hopefully you already got into your safe place. Is that a loss in uh, correlation coefficient over there? Is that co-located with what we have? Uh, Earth in the atmosphere. Okay. Yeah. Let me, let me see. We may have a loss in correlation coefficient here. Yeah. So let me circle that right here. Oh, no. That's not what we wanted. Detect in my nose. So we want to circle this here. And that is where there may be a loss in correlation coefficient indicating that debris may have been lofted in the air. Let's go to our uh, storm relative velocity. You can see the bright blues and the reds exactly where I just pointed that out. So right along Georgia Highway 200 between Prior Road or Prior Road and uh, Giles Hightower Road, that's where we have the most likely area for a tornado that may be on the ground. Andrew, if you could put that in the National Weather Service chat, ask them what their thoughts are on uh, a debris signature there potentially uh, with that loss of correlation coefficient. Um, let's go back to radar, see if that, and that lines up exactly with where our, our hook is. And in fact, this is a very large hook. This is, this is an extremely large hook here that wraps all the way back into the storm. So this thing has intense rotation within the mesocyclone of this storm. So um, absolutely, I mean, the perfect and prime structure for what you're looking for, for a very strong rotating supercellular storm. Andrew? Um, I heard it beeping. What was that uh, additional information that um, you gave? They're getting reports of golf ball size hail right now in Blakely. Okay, golf ball size hail reported in Blakely. If you are in Blakely, you are safe. There is no tornado threat for you, and the hail threat is at zero as well. So if you want to step outside, grab some of those golf ball size hailstones, take some pictures, send it to us, that would be uh, phenomenal. If you could even put a, a quarter next to it to show the size of the stone or put a regular golf ball next to it, Send that picture to news at WDHN.com. We'll get you on the air. We'll show folks what's happening with the storm so the rest of the folks in eastern portions of Early County can take this thing seriously. If you are in Damascus and points north there, you guys have through all the way from the northern county line of Early County all the way down to Damascus, you've got that hail threat. Take an opportunity. You've got only a, a brief minutes here to bring in your car, maybe, and, and, and in order to save it from that insurance claim, obviously. Other big threat, obviously, besides hail, is the tornado uh, warning portion of this. What you got for me, Andrew? Okay, so they are in agreement, and they're about to put a confirmed tag okay. on this tornado warning. So they're going to put a confirmed tag on this thing south of Bancroft. We just got that newest scan in. Here is your inflow notch. It goes all the way in, and this is going to be the spot of the tornado. So let me zoom back in. That is at the intersection of Giles Hightower Road and Georgia Highway 200. We've been calling that off multiple times. What you got, Jordan? East at 35 miles okay, per hour. Okay, moving east at 35 miles per hour. They did, they put the warning a little bit further further west than what it actually is. So anyone that's closer, within a couple of miles of Blakely, you're not underneath a tornado uh, necessarily. I, I, don't, I don't think that there's any tornado threat for you. For those in Blakely or just a couple miles to the east of it. But if you are, Giles Hightower Road and, and Georgia Highway 200, that, that's the intersection where this tornado is right now. Andrew? Go to the CC. It's okay. a huge drop off. A right, huge so drop off. Here you go, guys. We're going to zoom in on this. This is a tornado debris signature. That could be a sizable tornado. That is a tornado debris signature. I was talking about how it was a very large rotating mesocyclone, and it looked like, again, it looked like it wanted to drop at any minute or it already had, and I'm glad that the National Weather Service has put the confirmed tornado tag on this thing because there's no doubt that there is a tornado on the ground right now, exactly where we have been calling over the Giles Hightower Road, Georgia Highway 200, and anybody that's in County Road 178. I, mean, I, I can't, this is the type of situation where I cannot emphasize it enough. You have got to be in your safe place. Everybody that is in this warning, I want everyone that's south of Bancroft and toward Rowena to take this as seriously as you possibly can. This is one of those situations where it could potentially be 
life-changing situation. Not saying that, it, that it's a deadly situation right now, but I wouldn't doubt that it could be. I do think that this is going to destroy structures that are in its path. I think that it's going to cause a lot of problems. There's going to be trees on roadways, power lines down. For anyone that's between Bancroft, Rowena, Douglasville, you want to be in your safe place north of Crossroads there. This is well to the north of Damascus. So Damascus, folks, you are not underneath the threat of a tornado right now. But Rowena, you are right right in the path of this thing. You have got minutes. If you are in a mobile home in Rowena, Nicholasville, Douglasville, call up your neighbor that you know that has a well, well-structured home and ask them, hey, can I head into your uh, into your home right now to get into that innermost best safe room. Yes, Andrew, what you got? Okay, they're going to upgrade this to a considerable tag, so this okay. will be a PDS tornado warning. So this is a particularly dangerous situation, which is why I'm trying to change my tone here and say that this is a very, very sizable potential tornado, or a very sizable tornado on the ground right now that is causing damage, is life-threatening, is going to change the way that, unfortunately, some people's lives are right now. So uh, this is south of Arlington Highway, just south of it. Bancroft, this storm has barely missed the center of Bancroft, but maybe catching the outer edges. I don't know what the, uh, anyone that's along, again, Giles Highway or Giles Hightower Road toward County Road 178. Anyone with the mailing address in that area, the tornado's over you right now. If you've got an address along Old Damascus Road, the northern edge of it toward Arlington Highway, anywhere between there, you have got to be in your safe place right now. Daniels Road, Crowd or uh, uh, Clower Road, Road, Old Damascus Road, please, I just can't emphasize it enough, get into your safe place immediately. Andrew, what you got? Okay, so they're, they're saying off of the EOX radar, debris being lofted to 10,000 feet. Debris being lofted to 10,000 feet is absolutely insane. Let's use our uh, 3D tracker here and see what we can do with this storm. Do you um, think that hook has a debris ball in it a little bit too? Yeah, absolutely. So here you go. Let me show you guys what we're, what we're talking about here. You can actually see the funnel cloud being dropped down right here. This is, the, I believe, the funnel of the storm, the condensation from the cloud coming down toward the ground. And, uh, and it's reaching all the way down. Here is where your tornado is, right in here. Again, that's along and now just east of Giles Hightower Road, Columbia Highway 200, where you have that big bend that you're traveling south to north and then go due west, it's now just gone through that area. So that was the funnel that I was just showing you, and I believe that this is probably it right here. Uh, but this is, this is a debris ball. This is some debris being lofted right here. This is debris being lofted up in the air, and they said to 10,000 feet, so absolutely insane. I'm going to try something new here that we haven't used at WDHN, um, but let's draw this line through here. And, uh, and yeah, so. Uh, this is this is the portion of the storm where debris is being lofted up. So we'll get that off of here, um, and uh, and we'll go back to. Here you go. So again, a crazy situation over in Early County right now, to the east of Blakely, and we're going to zoom all the way down into this storm. And here is your wrapping around. This this could be debris being lofted in the air, and also very large hail associated with it too. Um, we'll get the 3D aspect off of there and we'll go back to our Dothan radar. Um, we're gonna put this into motion so you guys can see the movement of it. It's moving just about due east. It's actually starting to wrap up into itself here, uh, but it has sou passed south of Blakely, moving due east toward the Rowena community or just north of those in Rowena. I know Damascus is inside the tornado warning, but there is no tornado threat for you with this storm right now. There is no tornado threat in Damascus. I know that you're in the warning though. Just wanna give you that heads up. I always try and be honest with where we think that the worst of the storm is. It's moving, the worst of the storm is moving toward and north of Rowena. Everybody in Rona has got to be in their safe place. I gave you that opportunity earlier to make a phone call to a neighbor that has the best uh, well-structured home possible, a storm shelter. But if you haven't been able to contact somebody, now the only thing you can do is settle down inside your home, inside the structure that you're in. Maybe you've got a gas station nearby. You do have a minute to drive over, let's say, down toward Douglasville. If you were to drive out of Rowena, you got to go over to Douglasville. Now we've got our uh, debris signature that has been, that pops up there. And, uh, and so that's indicating that there's very high uh, values of correlation coefficient loss. So 
uh, we're going to take that off of there so we can see. If you're um, in Burlington. And just like Rowena, you've got to be in your safe place. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, don't even think about it. You need to go at this second. Turn up the TV as loud as you can. Get to your safe place right now. This is on the ground. Yes. So there is a very dangerous, they call it a PDS, particularly dangerous situation. Particularly dangerous situation with this storm right now. This is the most serious tornado signature that we have seen on a storm since early county's Damascus tornado. Uh, I think it was almost two years ago at this point, back in February of 2021 on President's Day. Um, so this is the most serious signature that we have seen with any tornado debris signature, any supercellular type of storm um, in a long, long time. So again, I, I'm using this type of phrasing to try and give you just that urgency to really act here. Um, uh, Andrew, if you could tell uh, Aaron to head over toward Blakely and then points off to the east of Blakely, um, that would be... Along 200? Yeah, along 200. Yeah, Giles Hightower Road. Um, so again, south of 62 here, that's Arlington Highway, that's where this tornado warned storm is. Um, and anybody that is east or southeast of Bancroft, along 62 toward Rowena, golly, I mean, you, you really have got to be getting into that safe place immediately. Nicholasville, you're inside of this tornado warning as well. You've got to be in your safe place. I wasn't calling out your name earlier, but I meant to. Nicholasville, Rowena, get into your safe place immediately. Nicholasville has just enough time to call a neighbor and say, hey, can I head over there into your safe place? place if you don't have one if you're in a mobile home you have this opportunity but it's only a few minutes this could be a life-changing situation or decision for you if you are in nicholasville and you want to head toward a neighbor's more well-structured home but within those that are in rowena right now you no longer have that opportunity within the next scan that comes in here in a minute or so it's probably going to be directly over you, um, unfortunately. So everybody that's in Rowena, Andrew, Andrew said it earlier, you have got to be in your safe place, have that TV turned all the way up. Don't be sitting in the living room, but be in that innermost room. Jordan. Correlation shows a debris signature over Rowena. Okay, debris signature over Rowena. Okay, it's it getting ready to move there with the next scan, I assume? Yes. Okay, okay, you may have just gotten a scan that came in that I have not seen yet, um, but yeah. There's our debris ball right here. This indicates that a tornado was on the ground causing damage, lofting things into the air. And National Weather Service said it's being lofted upwards of 10,000 feet. So that is a very strong storm, a very strong storm to get things from the ground back up to 10,000 feet in the air. And it's north of Crossroads, moving into Rowena, south of Arlington right now. If you're in Arlington, you're not in the warning, but anyone between Arlington and Rowena has got to be in their safe place. Here you go, here's that latest scan. It's barreling down on Rowena right now. Here is your debris signature. Let's go to our reflectivity. Here is your uh, hook, your hook, your mesocyclone, the spot that is rotating within this storm. Um, and it's moving right into Rowena. Let's check out our storm relative velocity. You're red and you're green. There's your velocity couplet. So you've got your velocity couplet. You've got your debris signature loss. You've got your hook of the storm. I mean, everything is pointing to a very large tornado on the ground causing damage. That's why we have this, this purple box here from Barron saying this is an observed tornado and it is a PDS, particularly dangerous situation. A, a, uh, do they have the large and destructive tag on this? Yes. Okay. Even if they didn't, we know all signs point to a large and destructive tornado south of Arlington moving into Rowena right now. So Georgia Highway 45, anyone that's along that you guys have got to already have been in your safe place. Nicholasville, your time is coming here in just a few minutes. You give it about five, seven minutes, it's going to be over or just south of Nicholasville right here in, uh, in, early, in the edge of Early County. Um, and, uh, and Andrew, if you could remind me the counties to the east of them. Yeah, I was actually going to uh, jump in on that. So um, Baker County is to the east of that okay. and also Southern Calhoun County. And you were talking about making phone calls earlier. If you know anyone that's in Northern Baker County or Southern Calhoun County, even though it's outside of our viewing area, give them a call, tell them a tornado Absolutely. is on the ground. They have to get to a safe place, they have to. This is one of those situations where we literally have zero doubt that there is a tornado causing damage right now. Sometimes you've heard us even today say, you know, we're not quite certain about this one. You can know where your safe place is, but you don't have to get there. This is not one of those situations. This is one of those where a meteorologist looks at it and says, there's a tornado on the ground right now. You've got to be where you've got to be, which is in your centermost area of your home. Let's review it. For everyone that may have missed it earlier, and I sure do hope that people are tuning in right now, 
style, you have got to get into that centermost portion of your home. This is typically a bathroom or a hallway. Close both doors on each end of the hallway, sometimes even getting underneath a frame, a door frame. That will be a very safe spot for you as well if you don't have a real centered location of your home. But get into that interior room, hallway, bathroom, closet, and you guys want to put a mattress. This is a situation where I truly believe in Rona. Hopefully you have grabbed a mattress and put it over that bathtub that you have gotten into. Kids first. Kids go in the bathtub. You get on top of them and drag that mattress over you. I'm telling you, this is life-saving information right now that could potentially change, make or break your future right here because this is a particularly dangerous situation with a large tornado on the ground. We're going to go back to our uh, on our radar scan so I can show you where this storm is and um, and let's go back to reflectivity. We're going to zoom on down to this spot here. And, uh, and again, it's moving right into Rowena, just south of Arlington, Damascus. You are not in the threat of a tornado, but anyone between Arlington, Rowena, Nicholasville absolutely is. Absolutely is. So this, is the, uh, this is the clear cut, most dry tornado on the ground type of signature that we could possibly have. Uh, I hope, and you know, Blake, if, if actually Blake just left the room. All right. So, um, you know, it, it would be great if our radio stations are, inter are heading out this information. And Andrew, if you could ask Glenn about that, to call the radio stations and ask them to tell people that there is a large tornado on the ground passing north of Rowena. Tell him to get our radio partners on that right now. Moving into Rowena and Nicholasville. I mean, there is just minutes here, guys. Minutes to make life-changing decisions. Anyone south of Arlington along Highway 45, it is barreling down on you right now. Fortunately, this is a slow, slower moving storm, about 40 to 45 miles per hour, a slower moving storm. Um, but I'm, I'm going to keep calling out some roadways here because I do want everyone that's between Nicholasville and Rowena to be taking this so seriously. It is over Daniels Road, over Clower Road. There is damage being caused in these areas right now. We'll go back to our debris signature. It, it is a lower debris signature right now than it was earlier, just a couple of minutes ago. So maybe, maybe this storm is weakened. That's only a maybe though. Um, I, I do believe that there is, let's check our velocity. We still got red and green touching here and it is right in the heart of Rowena. I mean, right in the heart of it. Um, north of B Billy Newberry Road, anyone that's along County Road 166, you have got to be in your safe place because these, this storm is, is just so clear cut and dry, has a tornado on the ground right now. So uh, let's go back to Nicholasville, Georgia Highway 216, County Road uh, 165, those that are along Nicholasville Road in Douglasville, north of Douglasville especially, you have got to be in your safe place. What's up, gentlemen? They will be extending okay. To They're going to be moving it toward Baker? Okay, Baker and Calhoun are going to be underneath this confirmed tornado warning here very soon. Um, but again, south of Arlington, Roanoke, Nicholasville, Douglasville, all those places, everyone got to get into your safe place immediately. It's right along Georgia Highway 45 in Rowena. We're going to go back to our debris signature. I do want to play this for you guys. Um, and, uh, and notice that huge, huge debris ball right there. I mean, this is just absolutely massive how big this debris ball was. We don't typically see them this big around these areas. And, uh, and right, right through there is where we've had debris being lofted. It does, notice how dark blue it was, and now it's more of a green. There are still things in the air being depicted by radar, being picked up by radar right now, um, but it may not uh, may not be causing additional damage. That's a possibility, but it may be, it's a low end chance. I still think that this, this thing is probably on the ground. So for those that may be tuning in on radio now here, um, and, and of course everybody that's been on Facebook Live and watching us live on TV, it's Rowena. It is directly, this tornado is on the ground or has been on the ground to the west of Rowena and is passing over north of Rowena as we speak a large, along Georgia Highway 45 in Early County. We just got a new scan come in. There's still a loss in correlation coefficient, so still seeing debris uh, being potentially lofted in the air there uh, to the east of Rowena now. Let's go back to velocity. Here you go. Here's that brand new um, velocity scan that has just come in, and that's along County Road 166. County Road 166 south of Georgia Highway 216, heading into Nicholasville. So it's already hit. Rowena or just north of it, now it's heading into Nicholasville to hit yet another city. Andrew. Okay, so they just extended. You're going to turn on your mic. Okay, um, okay so they did extend it. Baker. Uh, Baker, Calhoun, Early, and Doherty until uh, 315 Eastern. Yeah. Okay. 
East at 30. All right, so yeah, it's going to continue moving, and we may stick with this for a little bit longer. At bare minimum, I think that we may stay on Facebook Live. It is moving out of Early County here really soon. They have this new tornado warning for folks in Dougherty, Baker, um, and in the other counties that are to the east of Early County now. But this is going to we're going to stay with this for a little bit longer. Again, Damascus, you're in the warning. You're not underneath a tornado threat, though. This is well to the north of you. Um, and, and fortunately, again, we've been trying to give as much of a heads up to Rowena, Nicholasville, those that are north of Douglasville, between Douglasville and Nicholasville, and anyone that is north of Nicholasville here within the warning. We've been trying to give you as much of a heads up as we possibly can. This is why we do the jobs that we do, is to give you life-saving information. And this is one of those times where I'm telling you the best thing that you can do is take everything as serious as possible, take the kids, put them in the bathtub, take the mattress, put it on top of the bathtub if you have the ability to do so. Uh, because that mattress, very, I mean, it protects you from the debris that's falling in from above could very well save your life. Even if you get into a bathtub not every time, there are no guarantees that you're always going to make it through a situation like this. That's why you put yourself in the best situation possible when you're in the path of one of these things. Bathtub, mattress on top of you, pillows underneath or over your head, I should say, over your head, and, and a helmet, that's going to help potentially save your life if debris does come in. You want to protect your helmet you want to, or your head and you want to protect your neck. Debris coming in that may hit your head and neck area can be deadly just by itself. So again, that helmet could very well save your life. We're going to get a new scan here in about a minute or so and I believe it's going to be right over Nicholasville. So let me talk about the communities that are in Nicholasville or, or the roads that are in Nicholasville and points to the east of it because it's going to keep moving east toward Rabbit Road County Road 163 and Randall Lane. Those spots have just a minute or two before this tornado that's on the ground uh, is going to be moving towards you. Jones Spur as well. You guys have got to be in your safe place. It's going to be moving through Nicholasville, right? It should be moving right now. Again, our radar scans are actually a couple minutes behind real time. And so it's showing to the west of Nicholasville, I believe that it's probably right over Nicholasville or will be here. There it is. There's that latest scan. It is over Nicholasville right now. So everybody, hopefully that was in Nicholasville or is in Nicholasville, has already gotten into their safe place. Now it's the folks in Jones Spur. Hopefully you are taking this seriously and you are heading into your, into your safe place. Commissary Hill, you guys go ahead and get into your safe place as well. I don't believe that this is going to be impacting you, but I, I do think that it's close enough that the best thing you can do is just get into your safe place. Let's recheck our debris signature, and there's still a loss in correlation coefficient, so there are still things in the air. I don't know if it's dragging new things up from the ground back up into the air, or if it's just maintaining the things that it already brought in the air from east of Blakely. When it moved through Blakely, it was gaining strength. It was gaining strength. It didn't look like it necessarily had anything on the ground at that point, but as soon as it got east of Blakely, there was no doubt that there was a tornado on the ground. Now that it's passed through Rowena and Nicholasville, I do believe that it is causing or has caused damage in those areas. So Jones Spur, you are up next. Again, this is north of Douglasville. Ivy Mills Road or Ivy Mills area, this is going to move just to the north of you guys, most likely, or in your community. So let's go back. Let me circle the spot that while I have this pulled up. This is where the debris signature is, all right? There are things that have been lofted in the air. That is where our correlation coefficient is on velocity. We're using storm relative right now. It takes into account the storm's motion. Here's your green, here's your red. Red means moving away from the radar. Green means moving toward. So they are trying to signify that things are circulating there in the atmosphere. And then let's go to our reflectivity. And there is your debris ball of, your, uh, or of, the, uh, of the storm, the hook of the storm and you can actually see this is very interesting here if we zoom in on this you can actually see right over Nicholasville what looks like extremely heavy rain or potentially hail that is probably debris that's in the air right now at the center of this thing moving into Nicholasville so we know that there is a tornado that has been on the ground is likely on the ground right now moving into Nicholasville as we speak there along Georgia Highway 216 Andrew I was going to say, does it look like to you it's taking more of a northerly jog a little bit? It, it, it is, um, and yeah. that's, why, that's why they reissued that warning. Instead of reissuing it south, they've reissued this warning north. Um, and it's heading towards basically the tri-point of early Calhoun and Baker yeah. counties. Early tri or excuse me, early Baker and Calhoun counties. That intersection of the counties is where this storm is moving right here, right here. So it's going to impact 
less so Calhoun at this point, but again, Commissary Hill, you guys want to be in your safe place. Those that are in Leary as well, you want to be in your safe place. Morgan, I know that you're outside of our viewing area, but you guys no longer have a tornado threat with your original storm. You do have a tornado that's on the ground south of you though, uh, but I do think it's going to stay south of those that are in the Morgan community. So again, Damascus, you're technically still in a tornado warning, but there is no tornado threat for you. I, I can promise you that. No tornado threat for those that are in the Damascus region. It's moving through Nicholasville. And uh, let's zoom back into some of these counties here. We're going to do that. Um, so zooming back in, and we're going to do it real tight here because I do want to call out some more of these streets. A little bit harder to see from this side. But uh, Jones Spur is right over you. Randall Lane, Rabbit Road, Julia Jones Road, and, uh, and everybody that's along County Road 167 here, north of Ivy Mills Road. You guys, and everyone that is along Ivy Mills Road, you guys have got to be in your safe place right now. So Ivy Mills points north. Tornado worn storm gonna be moving through your area. And I'm talking about a tornado worn storm that has put a tornado on the ground, likely still has a tornado on the ground right now. We do still have a loss and correlation coefficient here. So there are still things that are in the air things that are in the air right now that aren't supposed to be there. We're talking pieces of homes, pieces of, uh, of trees that have been lofted up in the air, things off the front porch, whatever it might be, things that are supposed to stay on the ground are now in the air and they're not supposed to be there, but they are. That's because there's a tornado that has moved through Nicholasville and has probably caused some damage there at this point. And Jones Spur is next. You guys are on the chopping block here with this storm. It's moving through your area. Ivy, Ivy's Mill, you guys also are on the chopping block here. It's going to be moving through your area. This is moving in an east to east northeasterly trajectory here. And let me just draw that out for you uh, and we'll go to, excuse me, we'll go to our um, radar and we will draw that out. It's going to be moving kind of like this, all right? That's, but, but that's just the center, the center of the storm, of the, of the tornado signature here. There's more outside of it. This, story, this is a large tornado on the ground. We don't have eyes on it, but you don't get a debris signature like what we just got without having a large tornado. So um, again, this thing is going to be moving in that direction. It may stay just north of Ivy's Mill, or at least the heart of it, but I still think that everybody in Ivy's Mill has got to be in their safe place right now. Remember what we said earlier, that centermost room, and no windows, no exterior walls. That's what we would prefer. That can't be guaranteed every time, but sometimes it's a bathroom that's even the exterior, an exterior room. That's not a terrible idea if you have a bathtub and you can put a mattress on top of you. That could be life-saving for you in this instance. So um, I, will, I will say that this storm isn't as well-defined as it was when it was over Rowena and to the west of Rowena. Um, it has weakened just a little bit, but it is still a tornado warned storm that needs to be taken very seriously and it is in the far northeastern the farthest northeastern corner of early county moving into baker and calhoun as we speak leary you have got to be in your safe place because it's going to be moving toward or just south of you uh here in probably the next 20 minutes or so andrew so if you zoom out a little bit and look okay. to the south of the storm i think that storm down by colquitt and north of bainbridge is probably cutting off the inflow. okay and it, it may be it may yeah. these storms may be taking up the additional energy that this storm up here needs in order to survive let's actually do that we're going to zoom all the way out no additional severe thunderstorm warnings, no additional tornado warnings with any of the storms within our viewing area. There are some more storms in Pike, Barber County, Henry, into Dale as well. Jackson's got a little storm down there, but nothing exceptional. The only exceptional storm is the one that's in Early County moving into Baker and Calhoun. And, uh, and this thing, by exceptional, I really do mean it is an exceptional storm. This thing is uh, has put down a tornado uh, just just, I mean, 20 minutes ago was when it first, I believe, put down that tornado, and, and we've been doing the live coverage since. Now, it's technically moving out of Early County, and, and I do believe that the torna tornadic portion of the storm is out of Early County entirely at this point, um, but we're going to stay with it a short time longer here. Uh, and, uh, and Andrew, if you'll take over for just a minute, um, we've got the hand tracker on for you here, so go ahead. All righty. So Yes, um, like we mentioned, now the tornadic part of the storm now out of Early County, but you can see for the folks in Baker County, this is still a concern. We still have that hook shape, not quite as impressive as it was, but uh, still something we need to be monitoring here as we go uh, through the next little bit. But 
I will say this, if you're in early county, the eastern portion, you are done. You can come out of your safe place. I would, I'm, I'm assuming we'll hear reports of damage from the Rowena community not too long from now. So Baker County, northern Baker County, southern Calhoun County, that's where this tornado uh, that's likely still on the ground is headed next. Um, let's take a look at some of these other storms we have across our area now. Um, as Matthew mentioned, none of these at this point in time are severe. These are all just really more so garden type variety storms. This is these storms that we're seeing as we put it into motion are the ones we're more typically accustomed to during the summertime. These garden time variety storms and these are more of the, your springtime storms that are moving through portions of southwest Georgia, moving generally towards the Albany area. There's one supercell, there's another supercell, there's another Another one, so three that are moving in uh, through portions of southwest Georgia, thankfully away from our area at this point in time. But nonetheless, we do still have some areas that are dealing with some rain. Let's zoom into some of those places. We'll go to Ozark, for example. We're going to zoom out here a little bit. I zoomed in a little too far, but we do have a shower here. Um, and some heavy rain at times, but this is not severe. Just wanted to point out some areas where we do have some rain. Newton, Ozark dealing with some uh, rain, light to moderate for the most part, but you do have some uh, heavy rain, a thin strip of it here, um, about to move over to 31. And as we take it back to the east here, uh, we do have some thunderstorms still going through Henry County, but the good news is none of these are severe. Henry County, I think it's safe to say, has had their fair share of severe weather for the day, especially with the tornado that likely tore through Abbeville. And we have structural damage and we have tree damage, and we're likely going to get more videos of that and pictures of that in the coming hours or so. And um, at this point, east of Abbeville and then right around Haleburg, we have uh, uh, some heavy rain as well. But again, I want to make it perfectly clear that none of this is severe at this point in time. We are all done with uh, this supercell that's moving through portions of uh, now Baker and Calhoun counties. So um, early county, you are now out of the threat for this storm, but obviously there are other people that are going to be affected. If you know anyone in northern Baker County, if you know anyone in southern Calhoun County, even southwestern Doherty County, tell them to tune into the TV stations in Albany. They'll have them covered with that, and it still remains a confirmed large and destructive tornado with that storm. But good news is that confirmed large and destructive tornado now out of early county. So early county, you can come out of your safe place. And as far as um, a big view of the southeast, I actually want to go to a big view of the southeast here real quick. Um, and um, actually, hold on, let me go. Andrew, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through some damage photos today. Okay. We have the Haleburg Hail video. Um, and Andrew, you can step off the screen real quick. Haleburg Hail video. Let's see if we have that. Um, Folks upstairs. Haleburg Hail. Okay, go ahead, just put it up. Um, all right, so yeah, they're getting that loaded in. So some large hail from the Haleburg area, I believe, uh, potentially. Yeah, you can see it pinging off of the, uh, off of the uh, car's windshield there. Pretty interesting from Haleburg. Uh, Julian, if you could get the um, Henry County damage video back up. County Road 10 near Abbeville is where we had some damage. And we're going to keep going through this since all the tornado worn storms are out of our area at this point. All the tornado worn storms are out of the Dothan, or excuse me, the WDHN viewing area. Here's some video of uh, a house that's been damaged. We've had part of the roof taken off, um, and and obviously lots of uh, lots of damage to some barns there as well. That was the first tornado on the day. We haven't gotten video from the second one. In the second one, there may have actually been two in Blakely, or excuse me, in Early County, one in the northern end, and then one just to the east of Blakely. Um, but this is video from Abbeville near Highway uh, County Road 10. All right, let's go to Alabama Forestry. Do we have anything there? Damage to the Alabama Forestry Commission building on Highway 431. Um, and is that the one, Julian? Okay, that's the same one? All right, so yeah, damage. Okay, for, okay, sounds good. So it was all included in that first one. What about Singletary Road in Abbeville? Um, let's bring up that one. That was that. Okay, so it looks like they put everything together in one video. Um, is there the rotation of Highway 431 near Abbeville? We did show this earlier, and, um, yeah. and there you go. That was from Bradley Bedwell. Sent that into our yeah, Facebook I know page. Exactly where that is. That's the intersection of Highway 27 and 431 in Abbeville. That's okay. where the McDonald's is, as you saw. There's a Hardee's right there and a guest house in. 
Yeah, it looks like we've got it connected with some of the video of one of the houses that was damaged by that tornado as well. So we've had one tornado confirmed um, with video, with damaged video. Now we've sent out a reporter to the east of Blakely, and, and Aaron is going to go get some video of the damage caused over there by what was probably an even bigger and stronger tornado, I would assume, um, in, in early county compared to the one that we had in Abbeville. Abbeville's, um, the one that you're seeing right now, that damage from it, that one was very difficult to see on radar and, uh, and even produce this type of damage. Sometimes things just don't pop up on radar every single time. Let's go back to, um, let me see, there may, there may have been Abbeville rotation, the first one. Okay, you're on Henco Dam. Okay, so, and here's, here's more. This is the original, um, original video and pictures of damage that we had gotten from Abbeville. So at first it looked like it was mainly just some trees and power lines, but then clearly it also hit some houses too um, and, uh, and, and some barns and did some damage there as well. All right, let's go back to radar on Lynx 1 and, and we're just going to bring that up just to reiterate to everyone, yes, we still have some storms in the area. No, we do not have any warned storms at this time. So all of everything that you just saw there was from Henry County. There was some Haleburg hail and we also saw, of course, the damage from, you see this little indicator here, there was some damage up in the Abbeville region as well. Uh, there was also a tornado reported up in Eufaula. You see this little signature here, uh, and I'll zoom on down to it. So tornado reported in the Eufaula area. What you got, Andrew? So I actually saw a video of that tornado. That was on the south side of Eufaula. Okay. Yeah. So south side of Eufaula had a tornado earlier on. We tried to hit on that for folks. Again, it's outside of our viewing area, but we wanted to let everyone know in Eufaula at that time that they needed to be in their safe place. So even if it's not in our viewing area, we try and give people a heads up because maybe you have family and friends there and you just want to let them know, hey, bad situation coming your way. There's a tornado on the ground. When there's a tornado on the ground, we're going to let people know about it. It doesn't matter if it is in our technical warning area or if it's just outside of it. Um, I can't reiterate enough that right now, though, while you may be getting some rain in Jackson County, Dale County, into Henry County as well, you don't have any severe thunderstorms. You don't have any tornadoes. Everything has become significantly less intense now. We have quieted things down. There's no need uh, for folks to be getting into safe places. Those that were underneath the warning in Rona, Nicholasville, Douglasville, that worn storm has now moved outside of your area, is in fully into Baker County, and it's still tornado warned, um, but fortunately it's outside of our viewing area. Those that are over there, you need to be listening to Albany. You need to be getting that information from them. Um, so we'll take one more look at that storm, although again, it is not um, it is not worn for any of our communities any longer. You can still see the hook south of Leary. It was moving due east. Still see that well-defined hook there. Let's see if there's still uh, a tornado on the ground. And doesn't quite look, it's not giving the back those returns that feed along, um, I believe, what was high, or Georgia Highway 200, right, Andrew? Or uh, 62, is that? 62 is the north side. Um, and then this road down here, I can't remember exactly what it was, but we were naming them off earlier. Um, oh, uh, which one? Let me just get back to radar. Right, right here where the storm is, right along here. Uh, South let, of 62. Let me, let me look at that one real quick. That's, I, a, I, that's all right, Andrew, don't sweat it. Um, so, uh, coming uh, out of Nicholasville toward Milford. That is two six, Georgia's 216. 216, okay. Um, so obviously a long day here at WDHN, brain's getting fried at this point, but good news is, is that uh, we no longer have any warnings, any warnings within our viewing area. The storm that still technically has this confirmed tornado tag that goes until 215, it's no longer um, a threat to anybody in Early County. So um, I know that there are folks that are probably doing some cleanup over in that direction. Let me reiterate for those, I'm going to zoom in to it here. For those that are in Early County, between Blakely and the Rowena community, um, you guys south of Bancroft, anyone that was along Giles Hill Tower Road or High Tower Road, excuse me, in Georgia Highway 200, right here in this intersection, County Road 23, these are going to all be spots that have some damage. It could be it could be trees that are down along these roadways here. Could be power lines down. Could be structural damage. Please avoid the area. Anyone that is uh, we're going to start off with basically Waller Road, Pryor Road. Right in here points to the east along Georgia Highway 200 and then further to the east toward Rowena. Just stay away from those areas so folks can get things cleaned up 
and so emergency services folks can get out there as well and help out with the situation because again we had a very large tornado move through there at least radar indicated we didn't have anybody on the ground telling us about it but we could see on radar that there was debris being lofted to 10,000 feet which is highly unusual for this area highly unusual so I believe that we're probably going to get reports uh, from the National Weather Service tomorrow that a very strong intense tornado rolled through that that region of Early County and uh, and caused quite a bit of damage um, we've got a reporter out there they're gonna get us back some video that will show at five and six o'clock tonight we'll put it online as fast as we can so we can let folks and we're gonna put it on Facebook and all those things to let folks know hey this is what happened over here please stay away while crews are doing their cleanup we're reporting it to you so you know that uh, and, and of course we'll report if there were any um, any other injuries or anything like that that may have happened with the storm as well I really hope not I hope that it only hit the most sparsely populated spots of Early County but it does look like it went directly through Nicholasville through Rowena and um, and anybody that was along that Giles Hightower Road and, and Georgia Highway 200 right at that intersection um, to the east of Waller Road that was uh, that was definitely a spot where we had um, where we had that debris signature and I believe that a tornado touched down we also have this little uh, hail report so that was the golf ball sized hail in Blakely if you have pictures of that in the Blakely area you went out and took some go ahead send it to us you can email us news at WDHN.com or you can send it to us on our Facebook page and okay yeah if you wanna if you wanna throw up that hail video from Hailburg as well that'll work for me um, go ahead and throw that up there guys yeah here's the hail here's the quarter the golf ball sized hail most likely that um, I'd say this is probably quarter size tail, bare minimum, that it was hitting the car. There you go. People catching, catching. I mean, this is big hail. This is big hail for this area. We don't tend to see this down here in southeast Alabama. Um, this usually happens a further north of our region. So um, large hail reported in Hailburg, ironic name that it has there, not spelled the same, but close to it. And, uh, and so these are all at least quarter to golf ball sized hailstones that we've had come in here. And who did that come in from, um, Blake, if you, Okay, so hey, for everybody that uh, is sending in video and, uh, and pictures and things like that, we appreciate you guys taking the time to do so. Make sure that you do it safely. Last thing we want is for somebody to get hurt, somebody to get injured um, because they've gone out. Fortunately, at this point, it doesn't look like there is that case. Let's go back to radar so I can show what I'm saying here. Um, and uh, it doesn't look like there are any storms that are going to be strong or severe at this time. Uh, so it is safe from a weather perspective to go outside and check out what's going on um, around your area to assess the damage, to check out the hail that has fallen. Most of it's probably melted by this point, but to assess damage within your area, around your house, it is safe to do that. Just don't hit the roadways and try and explore where other people have had damage. You know, they don't want your sightseeing and rubbernecking. That can cause problems for the EMS folks that are out there trying to get things cleaned up in Early County, trying to get things cleaned up up there in Abbeville. Uh, so rubbernecking is not the thing to do right now. The thing to do is just to be thankful that if it didn't hit you, be thankful it didn't hit you. If it did hit you and you made it through it, be thankful that you made it through it. Say a prayer to the big man upstairs to God that you, that you made it through this because we had one confirmed tornado in Abbeville. We definitely had one on radar that was over in Early County that was a very particularly large one. And, um, and we have not seen a signature like that in about two years and four months at this point. It was back February, um, I think 15th of 2021 on President's Day that we had a large tornado that moved through Damascus and just destroyed these two homes. And, uh, and I hope that that's not the case here, but it had the exact same look to it. Um, so this is, this is one of those situations where we had debris undoubtedly being lofted. National Weather Service said it made it up to 10,000 feet, which is an exceptionally strong storm. So. Uh, we're going to get those reports out to you from official confirmation from National Weather Service tomorrow of the intensity of these storms. Uh, because everything, the storm intensity with what's left over here, we still got some rain up in, in Henry County. Because these storms are significantly weaker, um, we're going to go off the air here at, in just a minute or so. I just wanted to reiterate to people that um, there is... There aren't any storms out there that are strong enough to warrant any sort of severe thunderstorm warning, any sort of tornado warning, no special weather statements on these storms. So we've just got some regular old rain, probably got a little bit of lightning within a few of these here and there, but they're not producing the large hail, they're not producing the damaging winds, and they're not producing tornadoes. So at this point, 
Um, everybody is, you're safe to go about your day, but we need you to pay attention because there is an opportunity for severe weather again later tonight. I can't remember the exact timing on it. Um, Andrew, if you could remind me, is it this evening or is it late tonight? Um, it should be late tonight. Okay, late tonight, sometime overnight tonight into Thursday morning that we have the opportunity for more damage to be done by strong to severe storms again. Andrew. And I will mention this, off to the west there's a PDS severe thunderstorm watch over okay. in Mississippi, so out that way they could be talking about 90 mile per hour winds, maybe a derecho type event. And okay. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we don't. this one out here. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I'm hoping that we don't get a derecho. That's the last thing we need down here. Hey, well, I think, I think that, again, we've got another situation coming our way tonight. We can't emphasize it enough. We're going to yeah. be here. We're going to watch everything, um, and we're going to warn you on everything. We'll go Absolutely. live with the severe thunderstorm warnings on Facebook and on our website, and we'll go live with every tornado warning, or if there is large hail, exceptionally large hail, or if there are wind gusts above 70 miles per hour. We'll go live on TV for all of those uh, very important things. We're not just going to cut in with the little stuff tonight. If you see us on air, you got to be tuning in and you got to be glued to that TV and paying attention to what we're doing, uh, especially if, of course, if that storm is in your area. So that's all the coverage that we have for right now. We're going to keep collecting um, all of the all of uh, the video from different places. We're over in Early County. We're in Abbeville right now as well, and we're getting all of that information. Um, from, from those spots of the damage that has been observed over in those areas. We're exploring a little bit in Early County to find where that tornado did touch down. Aaron is out there right now, and, uh, and Robert Smith Jr. has made it to Abbeville to send us back those original videos. If you yourself have taken some, this will be the last thing I say. Make sure that you send that to news at WDHN.com if you are emailing it. If it's on Facebook, just go to our WDHN Facebook page, send it to us there. You, you can send it to me if you follow my Facebook page, Matthew Wine WX. Um, and of course, we'll give you credit. If you want credit, if you want it to be anonymous, we'll keep it anonymous. We'll send you a form that we ask for you to sign, and, uh, and then we'll put those things on air later on tonight. You'll get a nice, quiet, quieter rest of the afternoon and part of the evening as well. And then later tonight is where we're going to have that opportunity for more storms. Make sure that your phone is charged. Make sure that you know where the remote is for the TV. You don't lose it somewhere in the couch because you may be needing to watch again tonight. And, and make sure that your friends and family know that this isn't the only scenario of severe weather today. We've got another one coming our way in probably less uh, around 10 hours or so, sometime during the overnight hours. So. Um, Fortunately, we've got some time to rest in between here. Everybody in the tri-state area has some time to take some rest and, uh, and then be prepared for the things that are going to come our way tonight. So for meteorologist Andrew Clark, meteorologist Jordan Ambrose as well, and myself, Chief Meteorologist Matthew Wine, we appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll have more coverage as the day goes along. Make sure you tune into 5 and 6 to see that damage that has been incurred by these storms. And then also... During the 10 o'clock, that'll be the latest time frame that we give you another opportunity to get the latest on. These are where the storms are. This is where they're heading. As we go through the overnight hours, we'll give you that live coverage as warranted here. Uh, for all of us at WDHN, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you later on.